Bennett, former Anarchy yeah, coach, correct. will take charge of the Hawks for the remainder How of season 2023. I'm good, thanks, Virgie. <laughs> 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 Virgie's talking to Chris Jones, the umpire, about tossing the coin. Hi, how are you? It's another improvement area, and I get one every week. I've Feedback done it already. Feedback is a gift, Virgie. Feedback is a gift. Yeah. Uh, Michael Boothy gone from North Geelong as yeah. of last Sunday. Very quietly has slipped out the door. Aiden George, former coach, has returned to take charge for the rest of the year. Going on the GDFL. A name that has been linked, Peter Riccardi. To who? North Geelong. Oh, there's one link to Inverlee too, can I tell you? Heath Jamison. There, there you go, then. That, that would be that name. <laughs> I'm just, that's just a guess. Well, what did Heath Jamison say to us two weeks ago? He was coaching in Valette. No, he didn't uh, say that, no. No, but he no, said he, he said was, was not interested in coaching. He yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't coach, coach against Queenscliff. He would coach, coach against, against the Josephs. Correct. Yes. So that, so that rules out one, two leagues. Two yep. leagues. So yep. guess what? Yep. He's coaching Devonport, which is really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hall of Fame tomorrow for North Geelong. Uh, and some big announcements there. So good luck to those uh, nominated for the North Geelong Hall of Fame. Mick uh, Boothie not in it? I uh, don't think no. so, no. You played with Mick at Barwon Heads. I coached him at Barwon Heads, yep. yes. Uh, congratu- good footballer. Congratulations to Josh Finch on 300. Oh, legend. Exceptional games at Wollawari. Uh, could fight. have come to South Barwon about a decade ago. Yep. And stayed Dick. and was Great rewarded bloke. with a premiership as yeah. coach with Johnny Meeson yeah. uh, in 2018. Four-time Les Ash medalist. Stella career. Uh, plays some very good footy in Darwin too. Yep. Uh, with Tiwi. And uh, a wonderful career and a good bloke. Good bloke. And I still yeah. remember him winning the Geelong Advertiser Award and receiving it. And I was hosting the Ash Medal and I turned to Finchie and I said, Finchie, what are you going to do with the $500 from the Geelong Advertiser? He said, I'm going to the casino. <laughs> <laughs> the worst punter in Australia. He is. is good he? boy, Finchie. Yeah. No, he's no good on the punt. Yeah. So, uh, gamble was possible. Rain <laughs> really <laughs> falling here at... Uh, this at is not rain, Tom. This is not rain. I can tell you Thursday night was rain. Right, this yes, is not you rain. got very wet. This is drizzle. Uh, down boundary. Good luck, Birchie. <laughs> Vigilong Sports Medicine Centre, Birchie will be boundary. So let's look at the rest of the games. Tips very quickly, gentlemen and Birchie. Grovedale and Bell Park at Burdu. Oh, toss of the coin. Grovedale at home. Uh, I think, yeah, Grovedale are on the improve. So, yeah, I have to go with Grovey. Uh, I don't think Marnie or Wormback. No. Worm's back. He's Wormback, yep. is he? James back, is he? Uh, no. No, 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 he's no, not. No, sorry. No, yep. yep. So, those Grove two. Dale. I think Grovedale at home, just, but uh, good game of footy. Maybe. Push Joey's. Newtown should beat Lara. Yes. By cricket score today. Although this weather might lessen yep. the... Damage. 22 players unavailable for Lara. Oh, what's on total this? What's on no, just injuries, injuries? or yeah. unavailability. Unavailability. Birchie. Newtown or Lara? Uh, Newtown. Uh, Western North Shore, Ron Sells Cup this afternoon. We did this game last we year. We did. West. West Stephen, by Sells, a lot. Stephen Sells joined us. It was West. a lot of fun. He's a great man, Stephen Sells. Uh, West by a, a truckload. Yeah, West will win. Although I still reckon the weather's going to bring some teams back to, the, uh, yep. back to the pack. St. Joseph's and Colac is mouth-watering a trial. Cracking game. Another debutant for Joey. 16th for the year. Darcy Martin. Uh, Zach Mongelli debuted last he week. Did, did he? Yes. So he went. He went okay. He had a run with roll. He's, he'll have another one today. But again, the weather conditions, Kenny, it does change a little bit to what we looked at this morning. So that'll tighten up a bit that game. So I'm going to stick with Joey's by a goal. N- Neil, he wants to coach in here. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> uh, uh, Colac for me. Yep. To win yeah, that one. Tigers. Joey's uh, for me. And the Mick, Mick Thompson Cup this afternoon. Leopold and St Albans out at uh, Leopold Memorial Park. Leopold by 166. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think yeah. the weather's going to... Okay, 156. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leopold will get a chance to pick up some... Perc- You're on today, perc- aren't you? Percentage is actually going to play a real yes, role indeed. in the shaping yes, yeah. of this year's fight. Excuse me, did you see last week's scores? Yes. yes. Norman's had nine inside 50s for the game. Yes. Kicked four, two goals, four. Nine inside 50s for a game of football, they Jace. 2-4 or 4-2? Two, four, four, two. I thought they kicked 4-2. Uh, six scoring shots, whatever it was. It was four, two. Yeah, out of nine injuries. <laughs> Pretty accurate, but <laughs> didn't get in there enough. If you're listening to us through KROC 955, you can hear us through KROC football.live. We'll get our last break away before the bounce and get into this one from Anthony Costa Oval. Back shortly, thanks to Apco Cafe 24-7. We've got you, Lip Breed, KROC footy. At K-Rock, we've noticed a little bit of steam coming out of our mouths, especially at night, and especially whilst living, breathing Geelong and the Surf Coast. That's why we've got these winter warmers rolling around. Love this. And this. Geelong's best music all day, every day. Perfect when you're off to work in a sleigh. Yeah, that sounded better in my head.
On road, off road. Check out Geelong Four Wheel Drive and Camping, the home of Iron Man 4x4. The showroom is huge and the staff just love four wheel drives. Whether you need a bull bar, winch, suspension, tyres, a UHF radio, or just a map, they can help. They're your local agent for ECP bars, HSP roll tops, Ute Master, Bushman fridges, MSA, EGR, GME, and many more. Geelong Four Wheel Drive and Camping, Melbourne Road, North Geelong, next to Super Cheap. Keen to kick on and head out after the game? You know where you're going to end up, don't you? Lammy's Tavern. There's nothing more iconically Geelong than a Lammy's Sesh. So head in and finish strong with free entry and happy hour drink specials before 10 p.m. Get your weekly dose of live tunes. Give yourself something to talk about Monday. And remember, never lamb alone. Lammy's Tavern. Open every Friday to Sunday till late. You know where to go. Great news, Drysdale. KFC is now open in your part of the world. Drive through, take away, or on your favourite food delivery app. KFC Drysdale, now open in Murradock Road. Did someone say KFC? Thanks to our number one ticket holder, APCO. Fueled by APCO Cafe 24-7. Before the bounce for Team Tire Power and the Ponds and Norland Hotel, the KFC Twitter poll is in. Drysdale KFC now open on Murradock Road. St Mary's 82%, South Bowen 18%. Head-to-head joint insurance brokers, Kirsch. Well, the dreaded head-to-head we're calling it now. So uh, yeah. we're going Dobson today. Obviously, he's the leading goal kicker in the competition. He's going to get that matchup of Hutchison from South Bowen today. So they're out. Two to keep an eye out for. If they can keep him quiet, give South Bowen a chance. Thank you, mate. Geelong insurance brokers covering Geelong for 30 years. Let's go around the panel. Laurie Hill. St Mary's by 10 points for Laurie Hill. Birchie. Uh, South Byron by 6 points. And St Mary's won the toss and will kick with the breeze towards the swimming pool end. The South Point Garden supplies. Jason Doherty. Uh, St Mary's by 15 points. St Mary's for me by 22. Matt Kershaw, the pendulum very pendulum. quickly. Pendulum was back last week. Jace, as we know, was only one point out. But today, St Mary's a plus 3 in the positive. Plus 15 in the negative. They win by 2 points once we divide it all. St Mary's by 2. Let's get underway. Thanks to Geelong Bank. Early start here. And Anthony Costa Oval here is Jason Doherty. Sit with us. We're about to start Cal- <laughs> Gets it up and gets it down for South Bowen in the middle of Anthony Costa-Oval. Keats puts the tackle on for St Mary's. Ball spills free. Garner gets free. Breaks the tackle. Madigan gets wrapped up straight away. Do I? Said the umpire. And it's all rushed here at the moment. Madigan it has got it just on centre wing. He plays on now the left footer for South Bowen. Goes towards half forward with a kick. Big uh, lead out there from Keldu. He couldn't take it. Ball Rainey. He gets wrapped up straight away. The umpire says... Held to him. And we will have a, a ball up left Half forward for South Bowen. Scotty Selwood gone to Kelvin. He has. For Wombat Galley playing Farm. He's wearing 33, though, for those at yep. the ground. He was listed as 49. We'll get a ball up. We'll get some Wombat Galley Plan Farm matchups. It's a frenetic start. Tap down by Callet. Rolling ball tracked by Keith back from Werribee today for St Mary's. The clearing kick from Jansen to the wing. Goff stands under it. And got a little nudge from Copley. Might have taken the mark anyway. And he's got it a true centre wing. Best seats in the house. Apco Cafe 24 7 style. Right in front of us. Kick looking for Big Fort. Spoil came from behind. In front of the pack, Garner for St Mary's. Can feed by hand to Stevens. Stevens at 10.5 back. Sends the Saints into attack. Goff goes back with the flight for South Bowen. Bounce eludes him towards Dobson, trying to knock it to advantage. Copley got a piece of golf without the footing. Oh, Ooh, taken high. Copley and dumped. And we'll get a free kick. It was Hutchinson laying the tackle. And he'll have a shot at goal. The first of the afternoon in the hands of the 42 for St. Mary's Copley. One back gully plan farm. Any other early matchups you picked up, Kirsch? Yeah, Sam, ba- Sam Burke's got the job on Andrew Bosley. Augurinos and Madigan's a nice one in the middle as we have a look around. Sprague v Hayden Smith and Dobson and Hutchison have that head to head. It's just got the feeling of being a cracking afternoon yeah, here at Anthony Costa Oval, despite the, the weather not being overly favourable. Rain is falling for South Point Garden Supplies. Copley, we're right behind this. He'll kick from around 45. He starts at right, and that is where it loiters. And it will go through for a minor score. The first score of the afternoon is a behind to St Mary's through Matt Copley. And on the K-Rock, first quarter Geelong Bank scoreboard, the Saints, one behind. South Bowen yet to score. So the Swans called to kick it back in. White goes short with the kick into the back pocket. Copley got a hand to it for St Mary's. And right in front of the Don Matheson Pavilion, he sees it out of bounds for a throw in. So St Mary's defensively. Dean Johnston, Johnston doing a job on Noble. Just watching that now as we speak. Yep, so bad to throw in. There. 45 out from St Mary's goal. Goes Callet, in him. He, uh, he's in the ruck for South Bowen, tried to pick it up. 
Noel Rainey did. He got the handball out to Madigan. Kick around the corner towards Ford at half back. Tried to keep it in. Oh, and then he kicked it out of bounds oh, from midair, out of bounds on the full. And Scotty Selwood right in front of us. The best seats in the house thanks to Upco Cafe 24 7. We'll take the result with free kick. Selwood, a high ball towards Ford 50. Kellett positions himself off the side of the pack, brought it to ground. The roving done at the front by Augurinos. Kick around the corner. Hutchinson back with the flight drop, what he should have taken. In fact, it was wide, I should say, for South Bar, and it bobbles off his chest. And he's able to guide it out of bounds for a boundary throw in in the right forward pocket. Hillier got the job on force, a big job for him. Ball tossed back into play. McMullen and Kellett doing the ruck work. Kellett won the tap down into the right forward pocket. Tracked by Copley to the boundary, or Garner to the boundary line. And out of bounds in front of the Dom Matheson Pavilion. Good little crowd again rolling in. Always well followed. Both clubs in the GFNL. Good car parkage around the ground as well. Hope you're enjoying the call through Carrick 955. Kellett won the tap. Garner did the roving. Slung in a golf tackle. Ball spilled out to Madigan of South Barwon. Gave a quick handball release. Keith stole it though. Quick snap around the corner. Marked by White for South Barwon. So White now. Dobson stands the mark. He plays on across his goal. Goes to the outer side. Half back flank position. Looks for the lead. Can it get there though? That's the thing. The ball and came towards Duray. And paid holding the ball. In the end, held on to it too long, said the umpire. So, Samaris will take the free kick. They go through Jansen, who goes to half forward, but they've turned the ball over against South Bar and across half back, just settling the play down and getting numbers behind the football. Rain still tumbling here, getting a bit heavier as well. And Anthony Costa will they go back into the middle? Oh, that's front on contact. The umpire said play on South Bar and might be able to take the ball away, and they do. They go towards Bosley at half forward. He's behind on this occasion, and Samaris have got the numbers. Travellini on centre wing, goes towards half forward with a kick, puts out in front of McMahon. Damien, he can't take the mark off his hands, and out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Right half forward for Samaris, who played five minutes first term. Paul Philip Perry's time clock. Paul Philip Perry's there's no better way to travel to the footy. Well played by Sam Burke then. He's led Bosley to the ball twice now. He's just coming off him and being proactive. From the boundary throw in, McMullen almost took it away. Ball at ground level, a handball on the up, golf. Now the clearing kick comes out from Chris Hughes. He bangs it on the boot towards the outer wing. A rolling ball. Selwood in an interesting undersized matchup against Caldu. Leads a race for the ball. Handball went looking for Jansen but missed him. And a chance for the Swans to clamp out the back. Oh, it's going to come back towards Keaton Rain, who was just in front of us on the bench. And he's got to the other side of the ground quickly. He had a fresh airy. O'Neill to see the ball to the boundary line for South Bowen and out. And it left half forward for St Mary's, a boundary throw in. Five minutes and a half, five and a half minutes, I should say, played on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Port Phillip Ferries, there's no better way to travel to the footy. Boundary throw in, McMullen in front, gets it over the head of Hegan Callett, Copley through the middle, needs some help. Oh, Augurinos with the handball over the head, if you don't mind. Gets it uh, kicked out inside towards Keast, 55 from goal, takes the mark for St Mary's, goes towards the pocket, the lead's on, it's a good kick, oh the mark not taken by Sprague though, fell through his hands, now South Bowen able to get away, oh, it's chopped off though, ball by Dowling, on the boundary line, outside the left boot, and he's oh. kicked the lead, he's done it, goal of the day, early doors, here at Anthony Costa Oval, Patrick Dowling has kicked the first of the game, and St Mary's 1-1-7, they lead South Bowen, yet to score Geelong back, K-Rock, First got a scoreboard. Well, we know Paddy Dowling, he can kick 0-5 in the first quarter or he'll be able to kick five straight in the first quarter, but that'll give him a world of confidence, oh, particularly coming off eight goals too, might I add, last week, Jay, so his confidence was already up high enough, but uh, when he's on, he's on, and he'll be one to watch today, and he can't let him get off the chain, but just prior to that, Sprague got off the chain really easily on Hayden Smith as well. He dropped the mark, but they're going to have to tighten up in their defensive half here, South Bowen. He lets the voice of Harry McMahon you can hear in front of us coming through the K-Rock FX mics. It's outstanding commentary there from Harry. <laughs> Just doing a little bit of uh, directing of traffic as Fort in the middle does the roving of his own ruck work, but the little dribbling kick only went as far as Garner who gave it to Jansen, lost it in the tackle of Madigan. Here's Fort pouncing on the loose ball outside of the right boot. Caldu, ball hit the deck. Bosley can run into an open goal and kick the Swans first. Play on advantage was paid. Caldu being held, I think, by Selwood in the marking contest. And Bosley said, thanks very much. Poacher's goal out the back. Quick reply comes for the Swans. 
One straight six playing 117 on the K Rock. First quarter, Geelong Bank scoreboard. Geelong Bank's 1 2 home loan, 1% less for two years. You said it was an interesting matchup. Kingy uh, Selwood v Caldo, and obviously Bosley on Burke. And we've seen how proactive their defenders are being at the moment coming off their opponent. But when it's a one on one comp contest like that, that's where South Farmer are going to have the advantage and Selwood have to grab. So uh, if they can get the ball in there quick to one on ones, that's where they're going to be dangerous, South Barwon, rather than the ball on the ground. Ford having a run in the ruck now for South Barwon, changing with Callet in the middle, and changing in the middle is Hillier for Samaris. Through the middle, Augurinos couldn't take it. Ford got one high. Made sure the umpy saw it too. Well, he'll be grumpy after oh, that. He'll be very grumpy, Fraser. <laughs> and he's taking the free kick for South Barwon. He gives the handball away. Oh, bit of uh, candy. Back inside now they go. South Barwon towards centre half for Bosley. Takes the mark, 55 from goal. Good start from the big forward for South Bow, and he goes long with the kick. It's a great kick, too, in front of Callet. No, the, umpire, the, the mark wasn't taken. So Mary's working over time, trying to push it out towards half back. They do so. Handball back in board to Garner. Gets wrapped up. Was that a push on the back? Umpire said yes. And Samaris will take the free kick at half back. Umpires Dawson, Jones, and McAlini is a kick to half forward. It's a floater. It bounces off the chest of Dobson. Trying to work him off the footy was Hutchinson. Dobson got a handball up. Ling, Damien McMahon, Rayner on the cricket pitch area for St Mary's. Left foot kick had a bit too much on it. And Peters marks comfortably on the chest for South Bar. And it's real hectic out there. Hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. He's kicked to the outer wing. Well weighted. Jeray has got it just in front of the... Geelong Bank scoreboard that shows St Mary's by a point. Kick. It's a 45 degree kick that opens up O'Neill. Point of the square right half forward. Kick inside 50. Not great for Callot. Although McMullen at the front drop what he should have taken. Caldu, a little kick forward. Cleaned up out the back. St Mary's will get out of trouble. Burke to Damien McMahon to Harry Ling. He'll mark just inside defensive 50 and they'll look to clear the Saints. So Copley Long couldn't get it to him. They fought. Held that off for South Barwon. So he goes back. Short to Travellini, runs back to where McMahon was, now goes along the line, Nick Stevens goes up, can't take the mark, Dobson off the back, gets a kick around the corner, Copley fell over at the crucial stage but was able to get up, he couldn't get it though, Peters left it behind, Nick Stevens doesn't, handball over the top, was great to Garner, Garner now 50 out, off a step, goes into a vacant half forward flank, foot race getting out there, first Loftus on the ground, we know he's a racehorse greyhound, he gets back around, right foot kick, 50 from goal, towards the goal square, in fact he has pushed it out of bounds, on the full in the left forward pocket. So the Swans will take the free kick. You saw how quick he got off his opponent then, just over 10 metres. He was away. He gave Dylan Starkey Winburn. He did. A short kick of white marked by Peters. Peters goes into the pocket and with a one hand reeling it in. Shepard gave a handball off and they'll look to clear. The awkward left foot kick is okay into the waiting arms of Madigan. Madigan on his left boot to a one-on-one O'Neill against Travellini. Neither can mark, although O'Neill ended up with it from the contest. And he's wrapped up by Hillier and Johnston. And we'll get a ball up. True centre wing, best seats in the house. Arapco Cafe 24-7, win free coffee for a year. Ford got Hillier off the ball a little bit too easily, did the roving, then got a quick kick forward, the rolling ball. Carmody, or rather I should say Noble, dumped as he went to kick. Now the clearing kick from Rainer for South St Mary's is marked for, by White. He's been good early for South Barwon. So he's just on the back end of the What's centre circle game? for South Bowen. Goes out wide with the kick. It's a great kick too, finds Jeray. So he goes inside 50. Oh, Caldo pushed off the yeah, football. can't do that. And uh, that was... He was just going for the mark and the Samaria's yeah. defenders were just standing there, put it, throwing their arms up and down. Johnson was one of them. And the skipper for South Barwon will have a set shot for goal from 40 out directly in front. Well, we talked about it before the game about not Trimpy Mullen not being down there is that key big and they're really struggling when that ball comes into the air because they're panicking because they're undersized. It's a real advantage that we spoke about before the game. So Matt Keldu, a 40 out directly in front, northern city end of the ground. Not that Neil worried about that. He didn't know. No, who? He doesn't know <laughs> about who plays in the back line. Oh, Keldu has missed it and has just jammed it in for a behind. So just got it in there. So, South Bowen go to 117. They tie the game. Samaria's 117. Geelong Bank K Rock first quarter scoreboard. Well, based on last year's two matchups, where it was four and one, the margins, four points in round four, one point in round 15. Expect another close one. Travellini short into the right back pocket and finds a marking target. That's Burke who's got it in the right back pocket. Long way from home. He'll go back to his defensive goal square, and Travellini has to stretch, but marks safely enough and now into the left back pocket he goes and he finds Rayner. Keaton Rayner of course his old man an absolute star with Grovedale in the 90s. Luke kick, 
kicking towards half back a fly but no mark by Hillier front of the pack good to see Doug Bond back he kicks the centre half back to Jansen the ball barely went 15 but the mark was paid now a kick wide he's got to run Selwood the former Geelong and West Coast star kicks towards with the right forward pocket and Loftus front position spoiled good by Starkey brought the ball to ground Loftus did the roaming but he was taking a really good tackle by Starkey and is going nowhere and he's going to get pinged is that tough darts well I thought it was yeah he didn't really have much prior he got tackled straight away um, and he tried to get rid of it. So the ball, South Bar, give it away to Peters. Oh, oh he's turned dear. the ball straight over to Charlie Sprague, who and they're into it. was standing pre pretty much 15 metres in front of his opponent, who the ball was supposed to go to, which was Todd White, and uh, Charlie Sprague has marked the ball 30 metres out, 45-degree angle at the swimming pool end of the ground. A little gift-wrapped present there for him. Put a bow on Absolutely. It. So Sprague, to make them pay for St Mary's to reclaim the lead again comes in set shot 30 out been in good form in front of goal and he has put it through so his first of the afternoon and the second for St Mary's they got a 2 one lead South Bar 1-1-7 Geelong Bank K-Rock first quarter scoreboard and the expert share thanks to the Sporting Globe watch every Cats home and away game at the Sporting Globe Geelong here's Matt Kershaw well scores from turnover today are going to be so important the less team that makes the least amount of turnovers and reduces the opportunity for the oppo to score is going to go a long way to win this game of footy and that's just a gift on the top of the square really it was only what 30 metres out and uh, Charlie Sprague doesn't miss too many don't worry about that he'll, uh, he'll slot them every time when you get freebies had a really good afternoon against Newtown going back about a month ago up at Eldersley Reserve. Ball into the air. Two rucks go out at Hillier and Fort Hillier. The tap. Roving Garner taking in a tackle, holding the ball, according to umpire Dawson. And it'll go to Harry Cunningham, who we haven't called a lot of yet. Cunningham short. Just got the kick to Mulroney, who we also haven't called a lot of. He then sees something he likes at right half. Fort open, sending it inside. Fort 50. Hughes. Fort went forward. Couldn't stretch and mark. Ground ball at ground level. Burke a handball into space. What a chance to run on. He'll get a free kick. Surely taken by Noble without. An umpire said play on. The other clearing kick from Connors. That will hug the boundary line. It'll actually start out and come back into the, the field of play. Front of the pack. Tackle late. There's going to be a free kick for a hold to Middleton. But, gee, there should have been one play earlier to St Mary's. And Middleton will take it, the former Bannockburn player, in his first season at South Barwon. He goes deep forward, looking for Ford, who comes out, takes the mark easily in the end, just positioned yeah. himself perfectly in the back, put his hands up and took the mark and will shoot for goal from 35 outside angle. Too big. Yeah, Too easy. Read it better. Absolutely. Yeah, kept his eye on the ball and took the mark. The former Central Districts player in the SANFNL. So eight years. Eight years. That's right. He's back at South Bar and he comes in right foot kick and he has put it through. So he's first. And again, they square the ledger. South Bar 2 1 13. Samaris 2 1 13. Geelong Bank K Rock. First quarter scoreboard played 16 minutes on the Port Phillip Berry's time clock. Well, he's a bit of a weapon, isn't he, in the uh, GFL? Let's be honest. He can play ruck. He's a key forward. We've seen him play wing this year. He could probably do anything. He'd play behind the ball. So he's a real weapon. And to go forward and just take a not really kick five last week. So he's, uh, yeah, he's absolutely really important for this South Barland football team and their quest for finals going forward. 2 one thirteen apiece on the K-Rock first quarter. Geelong Bank scoreboard. Geelong Bank's 1-2 home loan. 1% less for two years. Not far from the home of Geelong Bank on Cheringham Street here at Anthony Costa Oval. Mulraney, the roving. A handball wide to Jeray. Jeray pulled the kick inside forward. 50 in South go forward again. Johnson will track it back for St Mary's. A handball he loops over the top. Burke, oh bang! Fort with a massive tackle. Ball spilled out in the tackle. Hillier had his kick smothered. Spilled for Connors. Kick around the corner. McMullen had it knocked away by Callot. South Bowen have it at centre half forward. Callot picked up the loose ball. Gave it to Mulraney. Mulraney a kick inside. 50. Big spoil. Johnston sends it out of bounds from St Mary's and we'll get a boundary throw in right forward pocket lot to like about south bar well both teams lot to like early but gee when they get that ball on a roll they use it precisely by foot they do you feel that when the ball hits the ground in south bar 50 the smalls just need to get involved noble and those type of players need to get involved because they're just rebounding when the ball hits the ground too easily boundary throw in 45 out four takes it from the ruck contest goes to no we goes back oh! and kicks the lab he's seven goal wow. the day contender fraser fort was grumpy after not getting the free kick <laughs> and he's just gone well don't, don't worry about it Take it out of the ruck, Tom Hawkins style. 
kick a left foot, kick around the corner, 45 out. It's as easy as that. He was that grumpy, he had time to stop, <laughs> snarl at the umpire for not giving him a free, and just kick the goal. 3-1-19, South Bar, when they lead some areas, 2-1-13. And that is on the Geelong Bank K-Rock first quarter scoreboard. Now, people might not have healed, heard Neil his uh, interview <laughs> pre-game while we call him Fort uh, Grumpy, but that was his nickname, not ours. We're just running with it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, he's grumpy not getting the free kick, I tell you. <laughs> he, he won't be grumpy if he's got the $100 Leopold Sporty Oh, that's Basher. true. That is true. At the end of the Before game, asking him reptile, reptile questions, that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> He'll say Neil to you. won the tap. Mulroney, the roving kick partially smothered, but it was followed up by O'Neill. They go inside forward 50 again. Johnston. Oh, oh free kick for a hole against Johnston on Broughton. Oh, I thought he was a bit stiff. I reckon he just won a battle of strength oh, there, Dion Johnston. I thought it was a great 50-50 contest, and he was just a little bit too strong at the right time. And Johnny Broughton has won himself well, a free kick, and South Barwon have a chance to just jump out to a 12-point buffer. Jeez, I tell you what, she's an important kick early in this contest uh, against the Breeze, or slightly against the Breeze. Mm. The man on the mark stands about 35 from goal. Broughton playing game 91 at GFNL senior level this afternoon. He's kicked 139 goals. He'll kick from just on 40. Ooh. He got an off the toe and he's pushed it to the right and through for a minor score. And the Swans miss an opportunity there. On the K-Rock first quarter at Geelong Bank scoreboard, South Barwon 3-1-19, St Mary's 2-1-13 as we approach 19 minutes played on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Travellini at full back for St Mary's. It's to come broadcast side. He's out of the goal square, kicks it long, looking for Harrison. Ling over the back, can't take it, because in front, Mark taken. That was easy by Hughes for South Barwon. Takes it now, right foot kick, back to whence it came. Bosley has to sit and wait, coming from the side. Callet, Samaria's at the bottom of the ball. Go towards Ling again at half back. Bond gives the handball away. Now McMullen on centre wing, goes towards an open go uh, open half forward flank. Peters gets back there, Sprague as well. They track it back towards the forward pocket. Sprague trying to tap it on. Dobson off oh. the ground, hit the goal up higher. Which way is it going to go? The goal up higher was in front of the actual goal line. And he's conferring now with the central umpire. I and think I it's think a goal, it's, though, isn't it? Oh, I think it's going to be a point because it's hit the it's hit the goal umpire in front. He moved towards, and oh, there it is. It is one behind. Jace. So goal umpire's advisor, Jason <laughs> Doherty. So behind to Samaris. They're two two fourteen. South Barn three two twenty. Geelong Bank K Rock first quarter scoreboard. What more will this day serve up? Peters to half back <laughs> wants Callum McMullen played spoiler for St Mary's. Hands and knees. Sprague tried to get it up to Stevens. Oh, the handball out by Mulroney went up the chimney and was taken by Keith. Lost it in the tackle. Connors dives on it. Madigan dives on him. Ball spills out. Mulroney fighting for it as well. And at the bottom of the pack, there'll be. A swan getting up last, and that's Harry Cunningham. And we'll get a ball up at right half forward for St Mary's. Tap down Callet, roving Cunningham, jammed it on the boot about eight metres. Well picked up by Carmody, turned and kicked quickly to centre half forward. Johnston back with the flight, couldn't trap it. Fought below his knees was good. Johnston took him in a tackle, forced a spillage. Connors quick kick forward, uh, just eluded Rayner. Couple of players down in back play. Rayner's got the footy to Hillier, to Johnston coming off half back. Now a kick towards the left forward pocket. Pocket in the leading Sprague. Oh good, de uh, Loftus, I should say, good defensive spoil by Goff. Hey, Saw it out of bounds from the Geelong VFL listed Goff defender, and we'll get a boundary throwing. Oh, How good was Ford at his bootlaces with that yeah. pickup? It was a pretty good pickup, wasn't it? I thought he was a, just a mid sized player. So, a boundary throw in. Oh, we've got to wait for the footy to come back. Rowan Goff has to jump over the fence and get it. Nobody prepared to get out of their uh, cars at the moment, <laughs> feels like. About 3.2. Yeah. Nice and chilly here at Anthony Costa Oval, but the footy's hot. It's been a great start. Swans by six points, 21 and a half played. First term, Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Port Phillip Ferries is no better way to travel to the footy. It's going to be Callet up against McMullen in the ruck contest. So Callet for South Bowen, or McMullen tried to take it out, Fraser Fort style. He couldn't do so. Garner's over there. South, South Bowen, though, through Broughton. Now Madigan's handball missed the target. Needs some support. He might try and get it back. Now Bond runs across half forward, tries to get it towards Ling. Now blind turn from Rayner. Got it away. They try and chip the ball out towards centre half forward. Hillier overruns it. O'Neill gets wrapped up by Rayner. And a good tackle, as you might have heard in the effects, Mike, has stopped the Swans in defence, and we'll have a ball up. Right half forward in front of the Don Matheson Pavilion here at Anthony Costa Oval. Umpire McElhinney to put it into the air. Callet to do the ruck work. 
Won the tap down, but the roving done by Keast. He jammed it on the boot from out of the pack and it rolled towards the boundary line and out of bounds in front of Paddy Dowling, who has been kept company this afternoon. Might be Hughes for Wombat Gully Plant Farm. The St Bernard's recruit at the moment has got the job on the dynamic Dowling. Ball back into play. Double palm down McMullen. Here is Darling Dowling, but not being able to take it cleanly out of the pack. Kellett jammed it on the boot to half back. Trying to get a hand on it, Damien McMahon. He couldn't Whoa. calm it. He lost it in the tackle. Cunningham's been good. Okay. Now he bangs it on the boot towards the wing. Selwood leads the race. Bosley to track him, but Selwood was able to just to shimmy. Amble on the bounce towards Jansen. Back to Selwood. Scott Selwood now for St Mary's. Well weighted ball onto the chest of McMahon. And he's got it back edge of the centre wicket area. Plays on now. Goes to the right foot kick. Long towards half forward. Pack there. Push was it from Dowling? Said the umpire. Yes, it was. South Barn will take the free kick. Charlie Sprague's gone back to Caldo. Oh, oh, gee whiz. There was going to be a kick that came away <laughs> for South Bow and was going to go across the face of goal. It comes towards Caldo in the end, and it's actually pushed off his... It was Hayden oh, Smith. It was Hayden Smith who was... Well, I think he saw Charlie Sprague out of the corner of his eye. Do, and he was only going to do exactly the same as he did previously, and he went down the line. So, boundary throw in at centre wing now. Ball. In dispute, Madigan, or oh, just got the handball away. Callet gets through some traffic back towards Madigan under pressure. Stephen's got a hand in there for St Mary's. Madigan on hands and knees. Big pack develops right in front of us in the best seats in the house, thanks to Apco Cafe 24 7, and we'll have a ball up. Very talented runner for South Barn in Jay Lever this afternoon. No Ollie Lee uh, in the pink. I wouldn't mind him uh, just back there. Yeah. Just to shore things up. <laughs> just forward to the wing, a ball up. St Mary's in attack. Callet though won the tap down. Johnston the roving. Noble the tackle along with Cunningham. Going nowhere, ball up. We are about eight metres away from the action. Best seats in the house. Apco Cafe 24 7. Win free coffee for a year. I could direct traffic from here. <laughs> You and McMullen and Callet to go at it again. McMullen got high, won the tap down. Here's Augurinos, good tackle. Madigan bringing him to ground. And holding the ball, no, oh, geez, just as the ball came out. About it. It took a bit. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was going to be a swing of the arms, but it wasn't. It was a crossing of the chest, and we will go again. Madigan, front pos oh, sorry, Callet front position. On the tap down, Mulraney over around the footy. Chance for Stevens for St Mary's. Bangs it forward to a one-on-one. -on -one. Dobson out the back, can't take the mark. It's knocked towards the boundary line. Hutchinson, Loftus is there. Taken with Dobson when he have the footy, doesn't matter. Goff has won it for South Barwon. They'll clear through Peters, and Peters gets it to Broughton. He's a long way from home at left half back. <laughs> Plays on quickly. Oh, oh stabs the ball shit. in the middle. It was okay. Good. And gets it... Uh, Sideways to Middleton at halfback. He chips the ball over the top. Mulraney had Madigan in support as well. Took it back end of centre wing. Thought about going back in board. Now he does. He goes in the middle. Chews it off a bit. It's okay. Duray. Now they're out the other side. You can see what they're trying to do. Push it out towards White at right half forward. Goes in. Board. It's okay. And taking the mark is Harry Cash and 45 from goal. Possibly too far out to score. He's in the Lockie Peck pocket at the northern end. He comes back in board, puts it at the top of the square. Fort goes oh, up. Oh, Caldo, oh, third in line. Took the mark. Hamlet Hanger contender from the skipper. And they've got some tools down there, haven't they? Well, that's what they've got to do. Yeah. They've got to get in there quick because I just said Sprague had to go back to him. And Sprague's still a couple of foot smaller than him. So when that air, aerial contest, the way it is, you know, Caldo can get 20 foot high. Sprague ain't getting that high. So Matty Caldo who defend. missed one earlier. From around about the same position. He's only 30 metres out directly in front. Good mark in the pack. And he needs to finish off his work at the northern end here to take the margin to 12 points. He comes in now on the runway. Right foot kick. That looks a lot better. Has he squeezed it in? He has not. And it's through for one behind. So he thought it did. He did. But the goal umpire said no. Right they said no. <laughs> three, I'm in charge. 3 3 21 South Bowen. They lead some areas. 2 2 14 Geelong Bank K Rock. First quarter scoreboard. Trevellini will go short up the corridor and Genia Flecting and marking is Garner and it's ironic that a St Mary's player with Genia Flecht. He then goes short to Augurinos. Augurinos to Trevellini who provided a run from outside inside defensive 50. The lead of Dobson missed him. Bouncing ball. Went through the arms of Loft. It should have done better. Cleaned up at the back by Hayden Smith. That awkward left foot kicking style. Got it to Cashin. Cashin a handball over the top. Mulraney's been good. Now a kick inside forward 50. The leading Callet Worked off it by Sprague. Ball got out the back. Sprague will be first back there looking for Burke and the boundary line and the umpire says throw it in right forward pocket thankfully Burke in the vicinity if he hadn't have been it would have been insufficient intent you would have thought 
And a boundary thrown at the 27 minute mark of the opening term. An entertaining one, South Barwon 3 3 21. St Mary's, their Archbishop Desmond 2 2 14. May he rest in peace. So, boundary throwing Callet against Sprague. Callet gets it to the front, off a step, kick around the corner by Cunningham. He's missed to the far side and through four, one behind, but skinny there on the kick around the corner from Harry Cunningham. So they go to 3 4 22, South Barwon. St Mary's 2 2 14. 27 and a half played first term. Geelong Bank K Rock scoreboard. Scott Selwood in the long sleeves. Kicks in to Trevellini in the long sleeves and he marks 35 from his defensive goal in the corridor. Handball off to Selwood. Selwood now with a helicopter to the wing. Ford will stand under it. Dobson will fly but brought it to the front of the pack. O'Neill uh, had to be cleaner. Couple of fumbles. Time to get it up towards Ford. Ford didn't take possession. Smart knock on towards Hughes, although Hughes had a fumble. Then time to recover. Handball release. Middleton up the chimney. Mulraney dumped by Ling. Pushing the backer a hole. Take your pick. Mulraney, who has been really good, the vice captain has it in the middle of Anthony Costa Oval. Goes long out towards Harford. Cashin had to hold his ground. Travellini for St Mary's. He gets the handball over his head. Pressure coming from the South Barland forwards. Noble got it away. Cashin now for South Barland. Oh, great kick. Just towards the top of the square. It was a two-on-one as the siren sounds. And lucky for St Mary's because they had a couple there. Matt Caldu asking for a free kick for a hold. Not forthcoming. And it's quarter time here at Anthony Costa over South Bow and 3 4 22. They lead St Mary's 2 2 14. Goals for St Mary's to Sprague and Dowling. South Bow and 2 to Fraser Ford, who had some sort of first quarter rotating between the Ruck and Ford. And one for Andrew Bosley, who kicked the Swans first of the afternoon. It's quarter time here at Anthony Costa Oval. South Barwon lead by eight. We'll take a break back shortly. Thanks to Abco Cafe 24 7. We've got you. The brief K Rock footy. Geelong's favourite way to wake up.
in the game with some, some marks on the lead. Sprague's gone back, as we know. Uh, Dobson's the one who's got to get into the game and kick some goals for him. For Geelong Sports Medicine Centre, your ultimate destination for health, fitness and recovery. Birchie, I think you've got Mark Neild with you. I do, Neil. Do you'd be impressed with that start that the boys made, but you did just tell them just to take a deep breath. Their work rate was really good, but now they just need to refocus and, and repeat that effort. Yeah, they, yeah, they do, Birchie. It was, it was a really good quarter of footy, so eight points of difference to what appears to be two pretty good sides just having a go at, at each other. The, the players fed back. They, they enjoyed the first 30 minutes. Yeah, I think sometimes human nature is to try and do a million things. You don't have to. Thanks. Good luck. Mark Neal joining us there. Is he coaching or commentating? I don't know. I don't know what he's, he's having doing, a lot of he's fun. He's having a bit of fun. Right. Thanks to Harvey Norman, Cry on Warren Ponds. The second quarter. We'll get back to you in a minute, Birchie. Callet gets it down for South Barwon, but Augurinos gets it for Samaris and goes inside Ford 50 and Dobson. So Kirsch called for it and Dobson has started well on 50. Goes into the Lockie Peck pocket looking for Lobsters. Takes the mark. Second attempt in front of Hayden Smith and will shoot for goal from. The right forward pocket, which is always known as the Lockie Peck pocket. And pretty skinny there, so he should have no troubles with this, I suspect. Kirsch, are you talking about how skinny the pocket is or how skinny Kate Loftus is? <laughs> a bit of both. <laughs> the greyhound that he is, <laughs> Kate Loftus. A, column B. He comes in now, 30 metres out, right foot kick, and he has given it to Sam Dobson, who took the mark over the goal line and threw for one behind. So... They start the scoring in this second term, some areas. They're 2 3 15. Trial South Bar on 3 4 22. Harvey Norman K Rock, second quarter scoreboard. The kick in wide is a good one. White, and it's marked by Smith, who under pressure has turned it over, and his left foot kick onto the chest of Keast, who's starting to resemble the old man more and more on the football field. Kick inside, forward 50. Good defence. He spoiled Goff, knocked it away from Augurinos. Front of the pack, Cash and brought it to ground in a Travellini tackle, and going nowhere and holding the ball is decision. Oh, wow. I, I, Harsh, maybe, on Cash and Ball's I, I, been free, didn't it? I can't can't see what else he could have done. So the free kick is in the hands of Jesse Travellini. He'll drive a kick into the left forward pocket. Dobson, his target, couldn't complete the mark. Front of the pack, Jeray for South Bar. Got a handball up to White. It's a little bit too hot. And it deflected out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Hit the right forward pocket. Northern end of the ground. You're at Anthony Costa Oval. Jane Birch for St. John of God. Quite on the injury front. Very quiet for both teams. So, yeah, that's good news. We put you first, St. John of God. Callick gets it down for the ruck contest. Garner. Got it up on the up to case. He goes towards the top of the goal square and Dobson comes out and takes the mark uncontested. 20 out directly in front and he's had a good start to the second term, Kirsch. He has and uh, that's what we wrapped up, isn't it? Would they have to use the ball better go inside their forward 50? And it may have been a topic they spoke about at the break because they've come out and Dobson's taken three marks already, albeit one behind the goal line. <laughs> but, he's, <laughs> but, you know, he's been a presence in the first two minutes of this game. To make the margin a point, he comes in, 20 out, directly in front for Samaris at the northern end and puts it through. So they go to 3 3 21. Samaris, South Barland, 3 4 22. Harvey Norman, K Rock. Second quarter scoreboard, think Harvey Norman for all the big brands at Geelong's best prices. Generally, we take it back a step and how the ball got to Dobson. And it was at that stoppage, the boundary throw in, where Samaris just totally outnumbered South Barland and they had probably three on their defensive side of the stoppage, which they fed back to, and it was an easy kick into the hot spot to Dobson. So, so South Barwon are probably just going to have to go a bit more man-on-man -man at those stoppages so they don't get beaten easily. Port Arlington kicked the first goal against Ocean Grove. Just for a random local footy fact, Port Arlington haven't beaten Ocean Grove since 1994. Goodness gracious. Oh, back in the middle. Callett and McMullen. McMullen got high, won the tap, and Madigan did the roving for South Barn. Fresh airing with a handball. Great tackle, Max Augurinos for the Saints. He gives a handball off to Garner, who gave it to Stevens, who gave it back to Garner. Garner now straightens up and kicks inside forward 50. It's a floater, a one on one from behind. Harry McMahon had to play spoil it and knock it away from Smith, but at the front of the pack, Garner jams it on the boot. Dobson all alone! Once again, top of the square is marked. They came at him from front and side, but he'd been standing alone. And by my count now, Sam Dobson has got to 50 inside 50 marks for the season. He's number one in that category for Kerr's higher this year. And he's now taken four inside 50 marks for the contest. And this will be for goal number two and a five-point St. Mary's lead. Back-to-back -back majors in the opening four minutes coming for the star from Caroy. He'll kick from 25 out. He pulls it left, but not far enough for it not to be a goal. And he's got his second of the afternoon and 30th of the season. He's the first man to that number. And St. Mary's now 4-3, 27. 
have got a five point buffer on South Barwon. 3 4 22. Second quarter K Rock action thanks to Harvey Norman. Think Harvey Norman for all the big brands at Geelong's best prices in the experts' chair. For the Sporting Globe, here is Matthew Kershaw. Well, Hutchison just lost him in flight there, and uh, you can't give Sam Dobson half a metre, let alone three metres. And uh, he did a good job there, Hutchison, in the first quarter and was right up his clacker for most of that time. But this uh, quarter, he certainly got off the chain a little bit. And you, you mentioned that Kingy, how dangerous he is inside forward 50. He averages five marks a game inside forward 50 and six six uncontested marks a game. So he's going to get his opportunity to have shots on goal. And if you give him five shots, he generally kicks five goals. Yeah, the ball's gone into the construction site at the northern end of the ground. So they've had to go and get the replacement. They're using uh, the area in the car park north of the ground to do the, the roof trusses for the Stage 5 redevelopment of GMHBA Stadium. So uh, Sharon has disappeared for the moment and they've had to go and fossick another one from out of the rooms and get us back underway quickly, although it has been returned. Uh, some couple of people have found their way through a bit of a gap in the fence to retreat. 140 buck goal. <laughs> back to the middle, Catlett gets it down for South Barwin. Tries to... Uh, Oh, Nick Stevens through the middle for St Mary's was fantastic. Running back with the ball towards Travellini. Gives it to by hand to him. He gets the, the uh, handball back as well. Close to the boundary line. Hillier just back on the ground. He can't pick it up. Now the ball comes to Shepherd for South Barwin. Right on the boundary line on centre oh. on the outer side. Wow, coming across Callett. He's in trouble too. Keep an eye on that. Birchie for St John of God. He's down with an ankle, right ankle injury in front of the scoreboard here at Anthony Costa Oval. And he's... He can't get up, so waiting for the trainers to come over. And the boundary umpire has the ball in hand. Is he going to wait? I think they are going to wait because he's pretty close to where this ruck contest is going to happen. Ben Callett. And he's in a bit of trouble with his right ankle. Well, this will change a few things too. We've seen it two weeks ago with Bell Park where the ruckman, the, the only recognised ruckman, come off the ground. So this would be uh, disastrous for South Barwon. It's going to take him a while to get off to. He's right on the other side of the crowd. He has to limp his way over to the interchange bench, which is right in front of the best seats in the house, thanks to Apco Cafe 24-7. Mark Blitzarves and former St Mary's player Josh Cowan among the interested spectators here at Anthony Costa Oval this afternoon. Just over near the scoreboard that shows St Mary's leading by five. So we probably can resume play. Stretch hasn't been called for. He's now out of the danger area, so they can... Probably resume play, although South Barn will be happy for them to wait till he gets off the ground. But the umpire has been given the green light to throw the ball back into play. Tap one down by Fort. Roving Damien McMahonoff. His boot laces Augurino snapped a left foot kick around the corner, but Jeray coming up takes a good mark for South Barwon. Just looking to hold firm for the moment, the Swans, as the Saints attack early in this second quarter. Kick towards Ford 50. Ling back with the fly. Couldn't take it for St Mary's, but Selwood can. He's cleaned up and then kicked a half back to Stevens and a couple of former. Geelong players connect up, and it's Stevens, who's on North Melbourne's VFL list this year after being delisted by Geelong. Available this afternoon and sending a high ball to half forward. Dobson flew early, got a hand on it, but couldn't reel in the mark. Peters tried to keep it in front of him. It's OK, knocked it to Cashin. Cashin looped it wide to Jeray out in the wing to Madigan, and the Swans will go inside 50. Goes there towards over the head of Caldu. Falls to the back, Bosley. He's outnumbered. Samira's got the numbers across there with Travellini. Can go wide, tries to measure the pass. Dangerous. Travellini will get it back from Jansen. Now they've mucked it up. Kick by Caldu off one step towards goal, and he's missed it to the near side, and that is his third behind this afternoon, Matt Keldu and, and South Barwon go to 3-5-23. They trail St Mary's 4-3-27. Played eight minutes in this second term. Harvey Norman, K-Rock, second quarter scoreboard. Travellini's going to have the kicking in duties for St Mary's. Got to take your opportunities when they pre present themselves, especially against a team like St Mary's. The kick in is OK from Travellini. It lands on the chest of... Sammy Burke, John VFL listed this year. He's had one appearance with the Cats. Well, they are starting to roll some back from AFL level Geelong, so opportunities might become a little less later in the year. Fort on the juggle, couldn't complete the mark for South Barwon. Tried to pick the ball off ground level. Sprague is in there trying to win it back. Fisted forward for St Mary's Valley as far as Cunningham. Now a little kick forward by Fort. Fisted forward Cunningham. Oh. Oh. And he... Wow. He put a saddle on Paddy Dowling. <laughs> he's won a free kick. First. Yep. <laughs> he comes laterally to Jansen. Jansen's got it at left half back. Broadcast side near our best seats in the house for Epco Cafe 24 7. He goes short. Wants Garner. Good contest. Cunningham was able to yeah, force a spoil and bring the ball to ground level. Garner on top of the footy. A couple of swans on top of him. Hughes is there. And also Harry Cunningham. And we'll get a ball up at right half forward. 
Last man up, he's Lockie Noble, not moving overly freely, but we'll get a ball up with Fort and Sprague doing the ruck work. Fort gets it down, Garner, or his handball missed the target, Madigan just on the ground, left foot kick, long towards the top of the square, it's over the back, in fact, which way is it going to bounce? Broughton, can he kick it off the ground? He can't. And it's through for one behind to the Swans, so they go to 3-6-24, Trail St Mary's 4-3-27, we've played nine and a half. In this second term, Paul Phillip Ferry's time clock. Paul Phillip Ferry's, there's no better way to travel to the footy. Ling short kicking marked by Travellini. He turned and kicked quickly and he saw something he liked. It was Damien McMahon all alone on the outer wing. Tried to loop a handball over the top of the defensive effort of Jeray was good. Damien McMahon wanted Selwood. Geez, just nice to be calling the Selwood name on K-Rock again. <laughs> <laughs> just when we thought on September 24 last year, we, would, we wouldn't be doing it again. <laughs> We get, uh, we get Scott running around for St Mary's and we get a boundary throw in. Fort grabbed it out of the ruck, had his kick well smothered by Olga Renos. There's going to be a, a very sore swan. It might be cunning and we'll keep an eye on for St John of God. St Mary's with a footy through Garner. Handball to Keist. Keist a high floater and back with a flight. White Dutch the best. There is a real breeze blowing from the north. Cunningham's to his feet as White goes wide and Jeray, who's been really busy on that out of wing in the second quarter, marks, turns, kicks quickly, just over the head of McMahon. And it was well taken off his bootlaces by Madigan. He goes wide in front of the uh, scoreboard to Cashin, who gets it over the top. And now through Shepard, South Bowen go towards centre half. Ford, one hand up, McMullen needs to get away from Bosley, gets the kick around the corner, but it's chopped off by Broughton. And he's taken the mark, about 45 out from goal. And in the left, oh, left half forward flank position at the southern end of the ground, he's going to have a set shot for goal, Johnny Broughton. Seven goals kicked, five into the breeze, Jase. Amazing, isn't it? It is. How that happens. <laughs> well, Johnny Broughton is going to have an opportunity to rectify that a little bit. Indeed. With the breeze. He is 45 out in front of the old pass players stand pavilion here. And Anthony Costa. He comes in. A right foot kick, keeps it low into the breeze, and he's missed that. And you heard... He hasn't rectified well, it at all. He shinned it. On the full. <laughs> so, South Bowen can't get anything going there. And the, Swan and the uh, Saints are going to take the free kick. They are through Harry Ling, who's got it in the right back pocket. Southern or swing pull end of Anthony Costa overly. He'll go short to Garner. And Jared Garner playing game 167 this afternoon. Now kick... A little kick by McMullen. That was a poor kick. Turned over. It was intended for rain. And Madigan picked up the loose footy. But his quick snap has missed everything out of bounds on the full. So some opportunities being blown here by South with the breeze. They're 3 6 24. St Mary's 4 3 27. They've only added two behinds compared to the Saint. Two goals won in the opening 12 minutes on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock of this second quarter of K Rock footy. Early start here. Reserves game abandoned due to an injury to a South Barn player. He's been taken to hospital and the two teams agreed to start at 1.30. Oh, Nick Connor's kick, unfortunately for St Mary's, fell into the arms of Johnny Broughton again. 50 out from goal. So another opportunity for Jonty Broughton. The last one wasn't crash hot. No. He kicked it out of bounce on the full. So he should have the uh, the idea with the breeze now after having a shot a couple of minutes ago. He has gone back on the Mitchell Stark run-up. He is nearly in Mark Blitzarf's pocket on the wing. He is, but he maybe learned from his last kick when he shinned it that he might need more space. Well, let's have a look. He's going to come in now. Right foot kick. 58. And no, again, Jace, he's no, done it again. He has done. Well, he's just got it behind this time, so Jeez. he's done a little bit better. He's got a score. Just. And 3 7 25 South Bowen. Samaria's 4 3 27. Harvey Norman K Rock second quarter scoreboard. Been fairly accurate through most of the season, the Swans. So this is a. Well, I think they might have kicked, they kicked 26 26 last week. They did. Selwood goes very wide and stretching. Garner takes the mark. He is an absolute marvel to watch Jared Garner. He's just perpetual motion out there. On the field is the former Colac star. He goes short with a kick to Stevens. Kicked 125, 101 for the year prior to today, Kingy. Okay, not as good as I thought, but still not bad. Stevens, a high kick into the sunshine that now bathes Anthony Costa Oval, and Sprague comes up and takes a nice mark on the outer wing. He's just back off on the oh, sorry. eastern side of the ground. Sprague. A kick to half forward, front position, judging it best was Peters, but he couldn't hang on to the mark, and Johnston took it off the pack, but he was wrapped up very quickly. And we'll get a ball up, Jure involved there. And at right half forward near the point of the square, Samaria's in attack, we'll get a ball up. Fort in the ruck contest, gets it down. 
Johnson comes in Sprague doing the ruck work for some areas. He's on hands and knees as well. The umpire's going to ping for holding the ball, is he? No. So it was held in in the end. And it will come back to the umpire point of the centre square at half four for St Mary's. Sprague again in the ruck against Fraser Fort for South Barwon. Fort, big thump down. Wants somebody to run onto it. He gets Cunningham. His handball, though, missed the target. Jansen rode the tackle and tried to get the handball away. Now Cunningham does, and he gets a spiral torpedo punt into the middle. Punched away by Connors for St Mary's. Rainer wrapped up by Cashin in the tackle. And the umpire... He's going to ping him. On? Oh, he's going to let it go. <laughs> Connors, it's a rugby scrum. It is. It's state of origin at Anthony Costa over. We'll have indeed. a ball up now at centre wing. Good game of footy. And based on the two margins last year and the fact that South Barwon haven't been beaten by more than seven points in any one game this year, you're not surprised that this is tight. Fort winning the tap down. Roving though, Sprague did the ruck against him. He lost it though. Quick kick forward. Brent a rolling ball. Mulraney Ooh. flicked it up. That was a throw to Fort. Fort a kick inside 50 with the one hand. Mark taken, or not taken, I should say, by Caldu. Front of the pack here is Noble with a left foot snap from 25 out. Lockie Noble with the goal and South Barwon take back the lead. They've been entertaining the goals throughout the last five or six minutes but not converting, but they get one there through Noble who's coming off four last week against St Albans and they kick their fourth of the afternoon. 4-7-31 on the K-Rock second quarter. Harvey Norman scoreboard. Some areas are 4 3 27. Watching the way their small forwards get up the ground, they get up really high, and I mentioned it in the first quarter, there was no representation by the smalls at the fall of the ball. And just that last stoppage there, I saw them reset and reset and reset, so they do want to stay home a little bit more, so they've got that representation, and that's exactly where Noble's got to be at the fall of the ball. So Swans with the lead again. The middle stages of the second turn here at Anthony Costa. Fort gets the ruck contest and gets it down. Ball spills free. Jansen, his kick was smothered, came back to him. He got the kick away again, open towards centre wing, and it will be out of bounds for a throw in. Can't be insufficient attempt, uh, attempt then, I wouldn't have thought. The ball just spilt free from the contest, so it's going to be another ruck contest between Fort and Sprague having a run in the ruck. Yeah, interesting ruckman. Yeah, Fort, big thump away towards half four. Travellini traps it. Gets the handball away to Nick Stevens through the middle for St Mary's. Wobbly kick towards half four. And Jake Peters takes the mark for South Bowen in defence. Out of the mark stands right on the 50. Dowling Peters wants the outer wing. Has he got enough on the kick? Well, in fact, landed nicely for Cashin, who hit it in stride. Then the kick inside 50 wants Bosley. Spoiled from behind Nick Mullen. Bosley recovered well, although left the footy behind. As Stevens came the other way, it'll be a free kick for St Mary's. Coming back, I think, to Nick Stevens. Bosley got him high. And just a couple of words between the South Barwon star and the former Geelong listed defender Stevens with it inside defensive 50 goes short and barely 15 but it will be paid the mark to Rayner he's still inside defensive 50 he looks to send it towards the outer side of Anthony Costa Roval Garner or Damien McMahon take your pick McMahon Mark feigned a handball but thought better to get back behind the mark and then kick quickly towards half forward wanted Keese went through his hands out the back Broughton cleaning up a handball that Madigan was able to reel in with a bit of a stretch and then a kick long to a one on one Noble worked Burke off the footy ball out the back Carmody overran it then came again good tackle Burke shrugged off in low Carmody left foot bouncing snap has missed to the near side. Gee, Carmody's lively. He's not dowling class, but he is dynamic. He is. And he kicks a minor score. They are now 4 8 32. St Mary's 4 3 27. 18 minutes played in this second quarter on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Rainer kicks it in for St Mary's. Goes towards defensive 50. It's a good mark, too, to Doug Bond, who takes it in front of Duray. It's to play on and give it to the outside. And they go St Mary's towards centre wing with the kick. At the front was Goff. He couldn't take the mark for South Bar. And through the middle, Damien McMahon for St Mary's. Uses a burst of speed. Goes to an open half-forward flag. Johnston takes the mark. 45 from goal directly in front. He goes with the kick quickly into the pocket. Missed the target. Was Garner. Will he be able to keep it in? He won't. He shoved, shoveled over the boundary line with the ball. And we'll have a boundary throw in left forward pocket for St Mary's. Bit of a wasted opportunity there going forward, considering they're 40 metres out. Boys, well, not good news down here for South Barwon. Uh, Kellett has ice on that ankle. I daren't rule him out after what happened uh, 
in, in last week's game, but um, it looks like he might be done for today. Yeah, boundary throwing. Thank you for that, Birchie Force and John of God. The roving at the front of the pack, done by Dowling, I think it is, and he is wrapped up and going nowhere. Well, after Angus McKay, I think we've seen a Lazarus yes. come back. Yes. Anyone could come back. <laughs> St. Joe's in Newtown. St. Joey's forward, and from that ruck contest, the ball was going nowhere. Might be Marl Rainey, or is it Broughton? It's Broughton a little bit more up on the ball at the moment. Now Pye puts it into the air. Tap down, Fort Roving. Cunningham's been good. Kick to the wing for South Bowen. Wants his skipper, Caldo, in a two-on-one. Got a spoil on it. Knocked it forward. Noble will lead Rainer to the ball. Under pressure. Noble got a kick around the corner. Rolling ball. Bosley just pushed McMullen off it, but left the footy behind. McMullen came again and gave a handball. Travellini over the top. He loops it to Selwood. Selwood in the right back pocket, driving a kick towards half-back. It's a well-weighted kick to Stevens. Stevens takes the mark. He's got Duck Bond short. He's got McMahon. He comes back towards Travellini at half back. He goes along the line, up to centre wing. Bond, who'd made some space in front of Duray, took the mark onto Wheel on that left. Does so now. Goes inside towards half forward. Big pack off in front. Takes the mark for South Barwon. Defensively just held up in the breeze. And the big number 15 for the Swans takes the mark and goes back to the middle with a kick. Mulroney had to sit and wait for it. He did. It just got to him. Now he goes with the outboard kick. Goes towards McMahon. Coming off halfback for Samari. Shuffled the handball out towards Jansen. He's wrapped up. Handball McMahon. Just got a hand up. Did well. Damien McMahon. Kick was partly smothered. Comes towards Noble. He gets the handball away. The quick kick around the corner. That came from Middleton. For South Bowen. Goes towards half forward now for the Swans. The umpire will come in. Ball it up. Big pack develops. Scott Selwood puts the tackle on. And we will have a right half forward flank ball up for the Swans. They're 4-8-32. They lead Samari's 4-3-27. Second quarter of k footy, thanks to Harvey Norman, Carayo and Warren Ponds, furniture, electrical bedding, computers. Tapped down by Sprague doing the ruck work against Fort. Garner the roving, going nowhere as Middleton and O'Neill hold him up and we'll get a ball up about 51 out from goal. Fort to do the ruck work again against Sprague. Fists at four about five metres. It's volleyball spiked by Selwood towards the boundary line. Kept alive by Keys to was able to pull a kick towards half back. Loftus a fly but at the front. Good Mark Hutchinson, who has really come on this year. Uh, made his debut in round one, given an opportunity by Mark Neald and taking it with both hands, although that kick left a bit to be desired. But he will get a stoppage inside right in the right forward pocket after the kick. Skew whiffed off the outside of the boot and skidded out of bounds. And it'll be thrown in front of a good crowd in front of the Don Matheson Pavilion. South Barwon attacking the Southern or swimming pool into the ground. Tapped down by Fort. Ball under a pack of players. Garner, one of those, not surprisingly. And also getting to his feet. It's maybe Carmody, or is it Cunningham? Cunningham, and we'll get a ball up. Still inside Ford 50 for the Swans, looking to push this margin out to double figures. Fort grabbed it out of the ruck, but had his kick smothered. Garner got a shove. Umpire said play on. Copley hit over the ball for St. Mary's. Brought down in a tackle. And we'll get a ball up. Right half forward. Swan's still in attack, and the game's just gone into a holding pattern for the moment. Ed Sprague and Fort been doing this ruck contest against each other for quite a while now. They have. McMullen's had to go back, that's why. Sprague got a free kick too in that ruck contest for a hold from Fraser Ford. So it's relieving a little bit of the pressure. Nick Stevens is working out who's pushed him over as he's run, I run think through. Got, I think he just fell over. It was no he? tangle of legs with Mulroney. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ball goes towards centre wing. Dobson works his way to the front. No mark taken. Off hands. Handball came out by Ling. Back towards Garner. Shuffled towards Augurinos. Off a step towards Dowling at half forward. Loftus is a Dowling! Hamlin hanger one-hander. And he can play on from 55. He's got... A thousand players calling for it. He goes towards the top of the square. Great kick. Just measured the pass beautifully. And Hillier took the mark. He had plenty of options there. Uh, Chris Jansen was screaming for it in the, uh, uh, in the forward pocket. But he went straight to the top of the goal square. And Luke Hillier has got a chance to put the goal on the board. He has. And give some areas the lead again. They're 5-3, 33. The lead South Bar on 4 8 32. Harvey Norman, K Rock, 
second quarter scoreboard and in the experts chair as always thanks to the sporting globe watch every cat's home and away game at the sporting globe geelong here's matt kershaw well south Palmer enjoying a fair bit of time in forward half then and uh some mary's players were all up the ground and it was basically a race back to the goal square and so Mary's got back there in numbers. And like you said, Jason, the call, they had plenty of numbers to choose from. And all uh, Paddy Dowling had to do was kick it to an area and someone would have marked it. It's exactly what happened. They looked dangerous when they were running back to goal. Speared it like an asparagus. It was... <laughs> okay. okay. An asparagus that. spear, that was. <laughs> Tap down Fort in the middle. Garner the roving. No, can't get his hands on it for St Mary's. There's a Saint at the bottom of an O'Neill tackle. And that is getting to his feet, Matty Keast. And just forward of the centre circles, favouring South Barn. We'll get another ball up. 24 and a half minutes played on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock in this second quarter. Tap down Fort, roving Keast, jammed it on the boot and brought about 15 metres for his team. But Harry McMahon was able to get his hands on it. But he then turned it over. Oh, Madigan, big tackle. Harry McMahon, Madigan was on the burst and Harry McMahon clung on for dear life, stopped his progress and got a stoppage once again, just four to the centre circles. So Fort and Sprague who have been going at it for 10 or 12 minutes in the ruck contest. Sprague gets the kick away from the middle. Johnston to run onto it. South Bar with no working hard. Madigan's in there for a kick over the shoulder. And it is going to be a South Bar on free kick. It's going to be Jeray. Right in the middle of Anthony Costa Oval for South Bowen. Kicking to the swimming pool end. He goes towards half forward. Oh, well, uh, Noble was pretty lucky there, I think. The ball spilling towards Madigan. So South Bowen can push it inside 50. Ball still in dispute. Ling comes over. Ball spills free. Harry McMahon's kick towards Fort and under pressure from Garner. Garner works his way to the front and onto the ball. Holds it up and he does pretty well, Jared Garner, because he had two or three South Bowl players around him and then some reinforcements. They came and they're going to be a ball up 45 out from the South Bowen goal. Fraser Fort put on some sort of iron sheep <laughs> arrangement. <there. laughs> Grabbed it out of the ruck. Fort jammed it on the boot, but Harry Ling standing tall takes the mark. About 15 out from his defensive goal. He wants it into the sunshine to Travellini. He marks just inside defensive 50. Turns and kicks quickly to Connors. Connors has it at right half back. Out of sight, Anthony Costa Oval. Saturday afternoon, K-Rock football. Connors banging it long to half forward. Dobson's got out the back. Marks on the chest. He's got runners, including Johnston, going inside forward 50. Hillier the other one, and Dobson finds Hillier. The recruit from Collie Amberley in the Farrah League in southern New South Wales. Excuse me? Where's he from? Collie Amberley. Collie Amberley. I think they're the Blues. That's not that. What's that other one? Bungan Door, Bungan Door, whatever. Where's the other guy coming from? Wilson Wilson Mack. Wilson Mack. Uh, Brocklesby Burham Bates. That's the one. (laughs) Jeez, there's some good names in there, eh? We could make a team of... (laughs) Kicked eight goals from four starts coming in. He's kicked one this afternoon, but he hasn't added to that. From that kick, it was not a great kick off the boot. And at the right hand behind post... There's a stoppage and we'll get a ball up. 33 plays, 32. St Mary's would love a late one going into the halftime break. Umpire puts it into the air. Fort and Sprague go at it. Sprague won the tap down. Boundary line too close. Ball out of bounds. Boundary throw in. 27 minutes played. Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Check out portphillipferries.com.au. There's no better way to travel to the footy. Blood rule for South Barwood. Down to you, Birchie, for St John of God. Here you got, I think Kelly O'Neill coming towards you. Yeah, that's right. Looks like he's right eye. There's just a bit of blood coming out of that. So Cunningham coming back on the ground for South Barland. So just a break in play for a boundary throw in now in the right forward pocket for St Mary's. Northern end of the ground. Contest. Fort got it to the front. And Shepherd for South Barland. Gets it away by hand to White. His left foot kick around the corner towards half back. He's okay. And the mark taken by Keldu, got it away. And they can drive it long, off a step. Shepard long kick to centre wing. Over the back, Bosley, late chance for the Swans. He wants something deep forward. It's all Samaris really goes to, I don't know where, the past players pavilion. There was two Samaris players there, and the, only, and the only one there was Noble. So the two wins out. Rayner goes with a kick. Dangerous, though, at forward 50. Madigan handball, turnover, back to Cunningham. He's had a good first half, and he finishes it off with a behind. Probably should have made a little bit more of that, Harry Cunningham. A few chances, haven't they, this quarter? 4-9-33, South Bale, and they tie it up. St Mary's 5-3-33. They kicked 1-5, Kirsch. And two on the full. Travellini's marked in the left-back pocket. He brings it to half-back. Loftus will set himself to fly against 
Goff. Goff did okay, got a hand on the ball, brought it to ground, and a handball on the up. Starkey over the top goes to Cunningham. Cunningham lowered the eyes inside, 50, tried to find a marking target, couldn't, but the handball out the side door, Noble. Couple of swans there, one of those is Hughes. Gave it to Broughton, dumped in the tackle, high. And taken high. And we'll have a shot at goal to give South a lead in the shadows of half time. <laughs> Well, he's got the yips, Broughton, so I'm not sure what he's going to bring here. <laughs> We've got some guys who in front of goal have been a little bit skewed with. Cunningham, two behinds. Broughton, two behinds. Caldu, three behinds. Yep. And Broughton, a chance to make good. Going out the full as well, Broughton, this quarter. And a couple of missed opportunities earlier. And went out in the full to Kirsch and the expert chair for the Sporting Globe, Matty Kirsch, all this afternoon. Any score will put the Swans in front as we approach half time. 29 and three quarter minutes almost played on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Broughton from 25 out. He makes no mistake and the Swans lead by six. First of the afternoon, 11th on the season for Jonty Broughton. And on the K-Rock, Harvey Norman, second quarter scoreboard. I think Harvey Norman for all the big brands at Geelong's best prices. It's South Barwon, 5-9-39. They lead St Mary's, 5-3-33. There's a little bit of a different look forward entry, that one, because uh, Caldo took the mark up centre wing and then you had the next one in line was Bosley. So Bosley had to wait for the cavalry. There wasn't much of a connection between him and the Smalls, but then the Smalls had to go to work when the ball was inside forward 50, and uh, Broughton got the job done eventually after a free kick. But uh, just a little bit of a different look forward line at the moment due to the injury to Callum, of course. As Sprague has, is having a rest, so Kane Loftus is in the ruck against Fraser Fort. Fort's not having a rest, though. So, no, he's still going for South Barwood. And, well, Loftus uses that vertical leap and gets it down. Copley off half forward, got it away to Bond on that familiar left foot inside 50 as the siren sounds. And no chance for St Mary's there for goal. And they trail at half time. South Bowen 5 9 39. They lead St Mary's 5 3 33. Main break here at Anthony Costa Oval with the Swans leading by six points. It's half time thanks to Garmy Chicken and Beer. Give me Garmy Warren Ponds. Chicken and Beer that's unmissable. Jane Birch will make her way out onto the ground. See if she can extract one of the players from either side to have a quick chat to us as we go into half time and the players make their way to the sheds. You might be wondering why we're at half time and not caught.
Gully Plant Farm are here to go the extra mile. Stick to the plan, have fun, work together and give it our best shot so your garden can be the greatest garden of all. Dad, you sound just like a coach. Oh, thanks, Erin. Now, whose turn is it to do the dishes? Not me. I'm still on the bench, Dad. Right. So see you soon at Wombat Gully Plant Farm. Tool on Townsend Road, Muller. <laughs> Thanks to our number one ticket holder, Abco. Fueled by Abco Cafe 24-7. Back towards Garner, shuffled towards Alvarinos. Off a step towards Dowling at half forward. Loftus is a Dowling! Hamlin, hang on one hand up. <laughs> We're back here at Anthony Costa Oval. Mark the just walked past and told us the quality of Lolly is not so good at local level as compared to AFL. No, I was really said, disappointed, wasn't he? said they were better or worse? Oh, he said they were worse. worse. He goes, you get the not quite right lollies oh, here at local geez. level. It's giving weekend this weekend for the Bowen <laughs> Health Foundation and it's continuing right across till tomorrow. It marks the end of giving month, the biggest annual fundraiser for the year. 120 volunteers on the streets of Geelong Tin Shaking. Also volunteers at Bunnings Barbecues at Warren Ponds North Geelong Torquay today and tomorrow. Donate online, bowenhealthfoundation.org.au but our third quarter's underway for scope access scaffolding and the Swans are going to go forward. Here's Jason. Yes, they certainly are. Mulroney got it out wide and they go towards Bosley at half forward. Travellini for St Mary's. They get a chain of handballs going. Nick Connors off a step towards the middle. Keese takes the mark at the back end of the centre square. He chips over the top. Got a couple of options. Dowling's one of them. Handballed it back quickly to Harry McMahon on the... Uh, on the up towards centre half forward, Goff punches away from Dobson. Johnson tracks it back with Sprague for St Mary's. They do keep it in, but Todd White comes across for South Barwon, gets the handball free. They try and get, the, get it away now, South Barwon, but close to the boundary line, St Mary's. They do keep it in, Sprague with a kick with the outside of the right foot to the top of the square. Goff! Takes the mark for South Bowen and will relieve the pressure for the Swans. Judged at best. We'll keep an eye on some Wombat Gully Plant Farm matchups. Golf into the left pack pocket to White, who started well and has been steady down back. The Coroit recruit will play a little bit of footy with Sam Dobson, no doubt, down the journey. White to half back. Fraser 40's target against Loftus. Fort just palmed it down to the front of the pack where he had Middleton, but Middleton has been pinged holding the ball. Garner with the free kick advantage, but he's put it straight onto the chair, although. The ball was spilled away, I think, from Goff. Front of the pack, Dobson, a handball to Jansen. Tight angle, pulls it to the top of the square. Bouncing ball. Sprague will lead Peters to it in the left forward pocket. He can seed some ground. Smart play, Sprague. Back to Harry McMahon, who marks about 30 metres out left of centre. Uh, back in back play as well for Paddy Dowling. Down with an ankle, I think, for St John of God. Birchie, keep an eye on that. He's going to limp off under some steam with the trainers. So, John of God, we put you first. He's in a bit of trouble, Paddy Dowling, as he comes towards 50. Harry McMahon. Kicked two goals in the meeting between the two clubs here last year in round 15. And the marks about 30 from goal. McMahon will kick from about 38, sends it on its way, Loves and it. ties, ties the scores. Dowling's just got a little bit of a steam up, but he is under sufferance as we go down here to Birchie with the score sco uh, tied at 39 apiece. Birchie, what do you see from Paddy Dowling? Yeah, he keeps reaching down to that right knee area, actually, so um, we'll just keep an eye on that and see what information we can get from the St Mary's camp. Thanks for that, Birchie, for St John of God. Third quarter, thanks to Scope Access Scaffolding. Scope Access Scaffolding, your project, our expertise, joining us here at K-Rock Football on a Saturday afternoon where we've got an absolute thriller taking place between the Saints and the Swans and as I said earlier no surprise based on the two results last year being a combined five points so back to the middle now Fort up against Loftus Fort gets it down Garner he left it behind him for St Mary's Mulroney wrapped up good tackle umpire says yes he uh, dropped the ball so free kick to the home side, Harry McMahon, Matthew Keast. Harry McMahon takes it. Keast thought it was his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Harry McMahon's taking, <laughs> taking like, give it to me. The, uh, the kick, and he gets it. Keast gets it on the end of it anyway because Garner gave it to him, and then he gives it towards Hillier just on the ground for Dowling, who takes the mark and will shoot for goal from 50 out directly in front. A little bit easy play there, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a bit of a training drill yeah, there, wasn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah. the the South Barnum should know by now that they love attacking the corridor, and they just basically open the corridor door says walk on through. So Hillier, who's kicked one today, this to make it two in a minute. Oh, that's a good kick. That's a very good kick from the man from, where was he from, King? Collie Amberley. That's Collie where Amberley. he's from. I'm not going to try and do that one. Two to Luke Hillier. And they take the lead. 7-3, 45. St. Mary's, they lead South Bowen 
and 5939, and that is on the sca scope access scaffolding K Rock third quarter scoreboard, Matthew. He's not a bad size, is he? He's uh, yeah. sort of, but in saying that, we haven't seen him sort of in that ruck contest, so they've holding him back from the ruck and they're sort of playing the makeshift ones at the moment. So uh, maybe they're thinking he's more of a, a focal point down forward, and uh, obviously he's had a few shots of goal and kicked a couple, so yeah, he's playing a good game of footy. Selwood Broughton matchup's an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, Selwood was looking for him as well, so that's a deliberate matchup, that one. The one McGully Plant Farm, 1201 Townsend Road in Moolat. There it goes through Broughton. It's cleaned up by Copley. His kick is a rolling ball that Bond takes nicely. Right half forward for the Saints. A high ball inside 50 to 3 on 2. Coming up but not marking was Hutchinson. The Swans are going to end up with it. Starkey wide to Fort. Fort inside defensive 50 with a low squirting kick that gets nicely on the bounce to its intended target in Jaray. Jaray goes for his skipper in Caldu who marks it. A kick at right half. Fort turns. Sends it inside Fort 50 quickly. Broughton with the sit. Flew over Selwood. Couldn't mark. Travellini at ground level for the Saints. Gave it to Selwood. Now the clearing kick comes. Connors to half back. It's a well-weighted ball and he finds Garner. Garner a kick to right half Forward warning, Dobson who on the juggle couldn't complete the mark. Copley front of the pack, quick release handball. Johnston kick inside 50s a dribbler. White lost it in the tackle of Hillier. Hughes has now got trouble, dumped and brought to ground. Copley involved. We'll get a ball up. Right forward pocket in front of the Anthony Costa Pavilion or the Dom Atherton Pavilion and Anthony Costa Oval. St Mary 7 3 45 South Bowen 5 9 39. So ball up. Fort up against Loftus. Fort gets it down. Rove by Cased. He got the kick around the corner as well to the top of the square. Punched out by Sprague. He needs some support. Madigan comes across for South Bow. Shepard tries to pinpoint the pass. Oh, danger. But he got there. Got it to DeRay, who runs from inside back 50. But he's turned the ball over. And there is that Broughton Selwood combination. And Selwood takes the mark. He goes towards Keese. Chopped off a little bit at centre half forward. He goes towards Bond. Gee whiz, a few kicks just holding up. And Doug Bond has taken the mark. And will shoot for goal from 45 out. Yeah, it's a couple of those almost contests where yeah. someone can come in to spoil. Now, Bond a bit better on the run than a set shot, you would suspect. But with the breeze, he, we're going to have a great look at this. He's standing right in front of us between the goals at the swimming pool end and the K-Rock box. He comes in and he no. has missed that from early doors through for one behind to the number three for St Mary's. They go to 7 4 46. They lead South Bay on 5 9 39. Scope access scaffolding K-Rock third quarter scoreboard. Your project, our expertise, that scope access scaffolding. Short kick in marked in the right back pocket by Peters who goes short to Cunningham who under pressure from Copley just takes the mark. The ball spilled out but the umpire was happy that Cunningham had held on to it long enough. Playing just his 11th senior game, fourth this year. He's been pretty solid this afternoon in the Ooh. cauldron. A yeah, little candy sold on the mark. And he's kicked for Mulraney who stretched but couldn't mark. Garner cleaned up for St Mary's kick inside 50. Wanted Dobson. Good spoil by Goff out the side door at rolled towards the boundary line and that is going to be insufficient intent played against Peters. Jeez. Right against the boundary line. The umpire might be up higher Mackle and he says, no, you didn't try and keep that alive. I thought he just fumbled it but umpire closer than I am and maybe can read the mind of Jake Peters. Tight angle for Matty Copley. You don't, even, you, ha you don't see that at local level and that, that's as stiff as you will get. Copley. With a man on the mark, about 30 around from the left hand behind post. This is not an easy kick. You'd have to. Ooh, he's he's going actually going to come out in the J curve, Copley. Didn't get good contact on it and has missed the left through for a behind. So, minor score for Matty Copley. He's second of the afternoon by my reckoning. And now they make that an eight point St Mary's lead. It's their equal biggest lead of the afternoon. They're 7 5 47 South Bowen, a 5 9 39. Kick into the back pocket, Starkey yeah, for South down Bowen. Down. Goes short to Madigan. In between the back pocket and halfback, Dom Matheson Pavilion side of Anthony Costa Oval. He goes along the line looking for Fort Goff there as well. Goff got his hands to it. Umpire said Mark. And 
I think he's still K-Rock's own at South Bowen, Rowan Goff, although he's wearing 15, which is not good. He used to wear 60 or something, yeah, which was correct. a massive was, number. We used to love him when he was doing that. I was going to say when he was scrawny, yeah, but he still is. That's right. He goes towards four. He's not scrawny. He takes the mark and handballs it away to Broughton. Bit of candy. Got the handball inside. Now they go with a spearing pass. Hughes gets it towards Bosley. He tries to tap it in front of himself. He's about 20 out from goal, but he's got McMahon, Damien against him. He goes short, short kick. Was that 15? Just, I think. And the mark has been taken by Fraser Duray. Damien McMahon didn't want it to be 15. No, because <laughs> he's turned the ball over. And now Fraser Duray has a set shot for goal from about 40 out, 45 degree angle at the northern end of the ground. A bit lucky again. You know, we've been talking about the Smalls getting up the ground and then slowly getting into the forward 50. They nearly lost it again when the ball hit the ground South Barwon. But the Smalls were just coming in and that's why the kick went to a small. So, DeRay comes in, right foot kick into the breeze. That's a good kick. That's a great kick. That is a great kick for a, point. For a behind. Yeah. You won't see a better behind today. No, that's a good behind. That's his first of the afternoon. And the 10th for South Barn. They go to 5 10 40. Trail St. Mary 7 5 47. Scope access scaffolding. K Rock third quarter scoreboard. Scope access scaffolding. Your project, our expertise. Travellini to bring the ball back into play. Runs out of his defensive goal Lofty. square. He drives a kick to half back. Loftus is his man, and he got him too on the chest. You can hear. Garner and Connors in front of us, waiting to go under the ground. Special Just comments as always. In for the Sporting Globe. Loftus takes on Ford on the mark and then just a neat little kick that leading up Sprague has marked. True centre wing, best seats in the house. Apco Cafe 24-7, win free coffee for a year. He goes through the outstretched arms of Hutchinson. It flirts with the boundary line and that is out on the full from Charlie Sprague. Not a great kick from him. And the free kick will be taken in the left back pocket. Looks like White has got it in front of a good crowd. Assembled in front of the Dom Matheson Pavilion on a cold winter's afternoon. Sun, though, shining here at Anthony Costa Roval. A kick to half. Back, Caldu flew. Couldn't mark off the hands of the pack. Middleton wrapped up. Good tackle by Loftus. Forced a spillage for Sprague. Sprague gave it to Harry Linger. Kicked on his left boot, but his kick was errant. Although oh. going back with the flight, Hutchinson couldn't take the mark. Ball spills. Chance for Shepard. He had it knocked away. Hillier got down low, but then getting lower to lay the tackle was white to bring him to ground. And we'll get a ball up about 35 out from the Saints goal as they attack the Southern or swimming pool end. They lead by seven points. It's their equal biggest lead of the game. No teams led by double figures in this contest this afternoon. From the ruck contest, Peter's got a wobbling kick out towards Bond to the boundary line at half forward. Bond, he tracks it and gets it, gets around one tackle and goes to the left foot, kick into the pocket. That's a good kick. And he's found Dion Johnston in front of the old pass players pavilion in the left forward pocket at the southern end of the ground and he's taken the mark. Colac 44 have jumped away from St. Joseph's 17 to lead by 27 in the second quarter. Bell Park 42, Grovedale 8, Newtown 46, Lara 16, West 35, North Shore 29, Leopold 45, St Albans 8 for Leopold Sporties. So Dion Johnston now with a kick about 35 out on the boundary line. Left forward pocket for St Mary's. He comes in, puts it up in the breeze. The goal umpire has not moved. He's gone, that's a nice kick, Dion. You can have a goal for that. And he does. He's eighth. Well, not his eighth. St Mary's eighth. They're eight, <laughs> five, 53. That would be a good day. 5, 10, 40. Margin out to 13 points here at Anthony Costa Oval. Scope access scaffolding. K-Rock third quarter scoreboard. Couple good ball movement plays from their back half end. Lofters. Uh, Sprague, obviously his kick was poor, but they got the ball back anyway through some good work. But they just start to click with their ball movement, I reckon. St Mary's, and uh, they're maintaining possession, getting their forward line quick. But that was a really good kick by Bond, wasn't it? It was a rocket straight to Johnson, and it was a nice little finish by him too. So St Mary's are just start to click in the gear a little. Check out scopeaccess.com using only local tradies to deliver full service. What's the response from South Barwon? Ford grabbed it out of the ruck and then got a dribbling kick towards the near side wing. Jansen cleaned up for St Mary's. Went to Damien McMahon with a kick. Who then short to Augurinos. Augurinos a handball to Garner. Garner inside Ford. 50. Dobson stretching and marking over golf. Takes a nice grab. A Hamlin hanger contender from Sam Dobson. And a chance to push this margin out to 19 points in the worrying territory for... The Swans is Paddy Dowling in front of us. Of course, and John of God just trying to loosen up that ankle and get back into the fray. Or maybe knee. I think it's his knee, actually. More knee yeah. issue Jane Birch mm. was just alluding to before. Dobson, right forward pocket in front of the St Mary's faithful. Will kick from around 40 metres out. Starts it right and works it beautifully. 
and kicks the goal. He's third of the afternoon for the league leading goal kicker. And the margin is out to 19 points. The Saints are 9 5 59. Seth Barwin 5 10 40 on the third quarter. K Rock scope access scaffolding scoreboard. And in the experts chair, thanks to the Sporting Globe. Here's Matty Kershaw. Well, from the centre bounce, uh, South Barwin just didn't defensively transition with St Mary's and they just ran in numbers. They had plenty of options coming off half back. They had plenty of options in front of the ball and they just got the ball in again inside their forward 52 quick. And South Barwin are really going to have to man up around this uh, centre stoppage here and try and get at least a clearance and get it going their way so they can even the game up a little bit here. So Loftus gets the ruck contest down tries to do his own roving work as well coming in off center wing was harry mcmahon cased in there as well and middleton for south bowen the umpire will come in and ball it up again play held up there fort goes up loftus with a big thump away back of the packs south bowen get it towards half forward and in front good mark taken by o'neill he's got the head strapped after that blood rule earlier in the game he goes towards center half forward off the back, Connors gives it to Selwood. Selwood out wide with the handball. Needs some support. Got some. Handball from Jansen. Goes with a kick now towards Sprague at centre half, uh, at centre wing. Dobson, all a bit of candy. Sold it. Handball was terrible though. Coming in, put the tackle on and did well. The out ball spills free. Madigan, he's pushing in the ground. Umpire said, yeah, pushing the back. Copley gave that away. Free kick. South Bowen under a bit of pressure across centre wing. And Madigan to take the result and free kick. Need the next goal, South. They, they do. Just find themselves under a little bit of siege. At, oh, yeah. Madigan's just going to get that into the field of play. Fort couldn't keep it alive. Although the boundary umpire put his arm up, didn't blow his whistle, said he kept it alive and he kicked it inside Fort 50. Keldu took it on the bounce. He was dumped in a tackle. Uh, a Bozo, I should say, who hasn't had a massive influence on this contest. And we'll get a ball up about 40 out from the Swans goal. They attack the northern end of the ground where the sun is really beating down and providing some semblance of warmth here at a very chilly Anthony Costa Oval. Feels like 8.9. Cunningham <laughs> doing the ruck work, an unlikely ruck work against Garner. There's two very unlikely ruckmen and didn't have that on my bingo card this afternoon. No. And we'll get a ball up after another stoppage. Swans need to jag one here. Tap down one by Burke for St Mary's. Now Stevens with a clearing handball on the bounce. Good tackle Madigan on Algarinos ensuring he's going nowhere. And we get another stoppage. So a game again in a little bit of a holding pattern after a little burst by St Mary's. They've kicked four goals in the opening 15 minutes of this third quarter for scope access scaffolding. Umpire McElhinney puts it into the air. Tap down by Loftus, wonderful roving Garner, hit it at pace, hugs the boundary line with the kick, actually more than hugs it, he puts it out of bounds on the full and white with the result of free kick for the Swans. Right in front of us, the best seats in the house, thanks to Apco Cafe 24-7. Oh, win free coffee for a year, Jason. Oh, need a coffee right now, I think. Short little kick, Cunningham for South Barwin. What is going? Called to play on now, he goes around on the mark, he goes short, Jake Peters takes it, handball's in board. Through the middle, White just uh, steers the kick. Gee, that was a good kick. He really kicked without looking. He knew Jeray was there. 55 out from goal, goes into the locky Peck pocket, and Fraser Fort takes the mark uh, against Loftus, and will have a set shot for goal from 20 out on the boundary line. Well, that's when he is the ruckman. He can get dangerous and uh, try and make Loftus accountable defensively, and uh, he did that. Push forward, and it worked. He's kicked two so far this afternoon, Fraser Fort. Well, they need this. Yep, he is smack bang in the middle of the Lockie Peck pocket. Who is the son of Paul Peck, who was a great Samiris player as well. How many times can we say the word Peck? He comes in, fought, and he has kicked a goal. Much later one, as we said, his third of the afternoon. South Barland, 6 10 46. Trail Samiris, 9 5 59. Scope access scaffolding, K Rock. Third quarter scoreboard. Well, they uh, had plenty of numbers behind the ball. They were actually plus three when the ball was in their forward half, then South Barman. I don't think that was by design. I think it was just the way it, it, it happened. And they were lucky to have those numbers go through the corridor. So it worked out pretty well for them. I don't think it will happen all the time, but uh, on that occasion it did. And geez, to say they needed that goal was an understatement. It gets them back in the game. It gets them a bit closer as we draw to three-quarter time. 18 minutes gone on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock in this third quarter. Port Phillip Ferry, Phillip Ferries, no better way to travel to the footy. Umpire puts it into the air. Loftus will go again against Fort. Loftus that time winning the tap down. The roving 
done by Keast. He's wrapped up by Mulraney and Fort and going nowhere and at the edge of the centre circles. Favouring St Mary's will get a ball up. Fought the tap down this time. Coming off his wing, Damien McMahon. He took the footy, but Mulraney took him and will have a tertiary stoppage. Two in the middle. <laughs> Don't go to a fourth because I've got no idea what that is. Hillier won the Ooh. tap down, hitting at a pace, Mulraney, but he went straight into Augurinos and Damien McMahon, and his ra charging run was halted, and we'll get another stoppage. And, Jason, it's your turn to try and clear the area. All right, let's have a look. Let's see what we can do. Fort and Loftus with a big thump down. Back to the actual centre circle. Now the ball spills for him, Mulraney. If it sits for him, he's away. He goes around with the right foot towards half foot. Oh, ball doesn't uh, sit too well for Noble. Now he gets the ball over the top with a hand ball. In fact, it was Carmody who got it over the top. But they ran out of uh, space there. Cunningham was pushed over the boundary line by Loftus for Samaris. And we will have a boundary thrown about 30 metres around from the Swans' goal. So they've been able to stem the flow in the last two or three minutes, the visitors. Ruck contest, Burke up against Fort. Burke got it down. Garner left it behind, has to go back and get it. We've got a push in the back, should get a free kick. And Will, so Jared Garner in defensive 50 for some areas to try and clear the ball. Played it really well, Jared Garner. He sort of just propped his body, and Middleton had really no choice but to give away a free kick in the end. Garner keeps it to the outer side of Anthony Costa Roval. Oh, good stretch, and Mark, that might be that Starkey out there that took the really good grab. He goes short. In fact, it's Smith. He goes short and finds Starkey. Starkey goes short to Goff. Goff has got it near the edge of the centre square. Eastern side of the ground in front of the scoreboard that shows St Mary's. Well, it says 19 points, but the margin is 13. Kick inside, 54. Too tall, too strong. Good target inside 50 is Fraser Fort. And this is a big kick in the context of this clash this afternoon. This to pull the margin back to seven points by our reckoning, despite the scoreboard saying 19 the difference here at Anthony Costa Oval. Kingy Nildy just came up to me and said, can you please get that scoreboard rectified? The players are getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nothing we can do about it. No, well, Birchie tosses the coin, so she could probably do the scoreboard as well. Fort Birchie. from 45 metres into the breeze has hit the post. First minor score for him this afternoon. Would have been his fourth if he'd kicked it. He's got three goals, one. And the margin is 12 points. Samaris 9-5-59. South Bowen a 6-11-47. It has been corrected at the 21-minute mark of the third quarter. Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Port Phillip Ferries, there's no better way to travel. One more before three-quarter time. If it's not game on already, we'd be really game on going into the last. Timekeepers listening to K-Rock football, as they should be. Kicked from Travellini towards Sprague. Missed it, but got it back from Hillier. Handball on the outboard to Garner. Has had a good game. Goes towards half forward with the kick. It's good to Dowling back on the ground with that right knee strapped. He's 55 from goal. So there's going to be a fair kick from there. He has got the breeze. He has... One this afternoon. If any, Dowling. if any player in the comms kicking this, it's Paddy Dowling. Correct. Right. Right in front of the Don Matheson Pavilion. I'm going to back him, and Ooh. he turns to the crowd. Right. Well, he comes in. He's going on the left. They're going up. I think it's a little bit skinny. It is. Yes. Through for one behind. So he made a good fist of it. Paddy Dowling. So they got a 9 6 60 Samaris. They lead South Bowen 6 11 47. And that's on the scope access scaffolding K-Rock third quarter scoreboard. Peters shields his eyes from the low northerly sun and goes short into the left back pocket and finds Starkey who does the same. He gives a handball off to Peters who ran himself into trouble. Managed to get a handball back to Starkey although missed him. Harry McMahon a bouncing, rolling ball. Unbelievable. No. Might have been post? touched or hit the post. Hit the post. Would have been something special from out of that pocket. And he's missed, and quickly away is Madigan with a long ball to half back. There might be a free kick in the marking contest, not paid. Johnston picked up the loose footy, turned it over to Ford, who bangs it on the boot to the wing. He does, he goes there now. That's a very good mark from Matt Caldu, who took it in front of Burke, back end of centre wing. So, they get out of trouble, South Barwon. He goes along the line, short kick right in front of the scoreboard. Guys, guys! And what you shows 61 to 47. Swans go now towards Ford again, who's going with the football, and now oh, it takes the mark. 
He's, he's just frozen fort territory here. He's half back, half game. forward. He's, he's, he's having he's, a good game. He's comfortably the best player on the oh, ground. Oh, easily. Goes towards the fort pocket, punched away from behind by McMullen. Jared Garner's game's been pretty good. Yeah. The only thing Fraser Ford hasn't done is kick in yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's done everything else, I think. Well, he'll probably speak to him at three-quarter yeah. time, too, as the coach, <laughs> I suspect. So, boundary throw in. Swans deep into attack again. 14 the difference. 23 and a half played. Port Phillip Ferry's third quarter. Caldu doing the ruck work against Burke. Off the hands of the pack. Cashin gave a handball. Quick snap around the corner. Might have been Middleton towards O'Neill. It's fisted away from him. Numbers, though, at the front of the pack for South Barwon. O'Neill back to Todd White. White's kick around the corner. Fortuitously lands in the arms of Doug Bond for some areas. He wasn't expecting it, Bond. But he's marked. And now he's conceding all the way back to the top of his defensive goal square to Ling as they look to open up the... Eastern side of the ground. He's kicked for Burke, who just juggles it in in front of Carmody. He was ready to pounce on any loose footy. Burke, inside defensive 50, stays out of side of the ground to the wing. Coming up, Peters for South Barn can complete the mark. Hands of the pack. Copley turned it over straight into the waiting arms of Goff with a handball. Goff's outside of the bright boot. Kick found Cashin, who gave it to Ford. Ford now with a bounce, and then just ambles away. A high kick inside 50. O'Neill over the top. Couldn't hang on to it. Front of the pack. Taken in a tackle and brought to ground. There's Shoulder. a free kick for too high against Selwood. And it'll be Cunningham to take the free kick. Selwood looks up incredulous, incredulously at the umpire. Was it late? A late free? Or? Uh, not, not sure. Uh, but it's a free kick either way. Yep. And Harry Cunningham has a chance to get his team back within single figures. Quickly goes on and gives it to Broughton who kicks the goal. So Cunningham didn't like his... Uh, chances so Johnny Broughton was just loitering with intent and we love it when Johnny Broughton loiters because that means he's going to kick goals and he's kicked his second of the afternoon and pulled the margin back to eight points good timing as we approach three quarter time third quarter thanks to scope access scaffolding here at Anthony Costa Oval South Barwon now 7 11 53 they trail St Mary's 9 7 67 as we've played 25 minutes on the Port Phillip Ferry time clock. Well, that's his go, getting the handball receive on the run, Jonty. Don't worry about your set shot, son. Just get him on the run. and uh, Or if you've got a set shot, handball to yourself and play on. <laughs> so back to the middle. Late stage of this third term. Fort, who's been everywhere in this third term, gets it down. Loftus, though, he's opposite number, roved it. Got it away to Augurinos. Now to Bond, handball to Loftus, followed up, handball forward towards Harry McMahon. Got Keith running sideways with him, but he goes forward over the back of a couple, comes towards Johnson. He can't pick it up. Swans working hard, ball spills free, handball over the top in the goal square. Dobson kicks goal number four. Quick reply for the South Bar for the St. Mary's time. They got a 10 7 67, so they take the margin out again. That's exactly what they wanted. South Bar on 7 11 50. Three scope access scaffolding. K Rock third quarter scoreboard. Good reply from the home side. Kirsch. It was. It was just a bit messy. Mm. They were fumbly some, uh, South Bar and then defensively. They just couldn't get the handle on the pill. And uh, they just, if they had just got possession of, they could have wrapped a tackle or taken a tackle. But they couldn't. They couldn't get their hands on it. And it was turned over. And it was pretty much a weight of numbers got them there. So uh, Dobson's had the change. Goff's gone to him. And uh, Hutchison's gone deep to Dowling. In the middle, Loftus got high, won the tap down, but Madigan did the roving, shrugged off all Garinos enough just to get a kick away and roll it towards centre half, Ford, Middleton and Ford tracking it, Ford a handball release, tried to put it into the path of Mulroney, but Garner played it wonderfully well, Ford's down in back play, keep an eye on that, slow to get to his feet as Jansen gave it to Selwood, Selwood on the outside of the right boot, kicking to half, Ford, Copley with the one hand, couldn't pull the mark in, ball at ground level, Starkey, South Bowen, got a handball on the bounce, Jeray, under a bit of pressure, the kick to the wing, Middleton did well, took the mark against Loftus. Reckon they need one before three-quarter time. The Swans get there to stay in the contest. Kick towards right half forward. Not that they're out of it, but just to make life easier with the win. Mulroney inside, 50. Carmody flew, couldn't mark. O'Neill off the pack, couldn't take it. Ball spilled out. Caldu handball, trying to get it to Broughton. Did so in the end. Broughton jammed it on the boot and kicked the goal. Made something from nothing. Goal called. Discussion. St Mary's players adamant that it missed to the right. Goal umpire says, I'm happy that's a goal, and he kicks his third. Scott Selwood is pleading with the uh, central, saying that he can't believe it. The margin back to eight points. Sometimes you just need a lift. Oh, my first thought off the boot was that it missed. I thought it missed. Yeah. But the goal umpire in a better position than us, and at the 28-minute mark on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock, a goal for South Barwon. 
and they go to 8 11 59. St. Mary's 10 7 67. K Rock third quarter scope access scaffolding scoreboard. Your project, our expertise, scope access scaffolding. I was just in that transition of play. You should have seen how much space Fraser Ford had because he'd laid on the ground that long they'd forgotten about him and he got up. <laughs> <laughs> he ran into some space and they missed him. So back Very to lucky. The, back to the middle. Loftus gets it down. Stevens in there for St. Mary's. Tries to pick it up. Can't do so. On hands and knees. Middleton through the middle. Gets wrapped up and thrown to the ground. Alpine says held in. Loftus putting the tackle on. Bell Park 43, Grovedale 33, Newtown 53, Lara 17, West 63, North Shore 30, Joey's 18, Colac 62, Leopold 65, St Albans 8 at three-quarter time. Good timing here at Anthony Costa Oval. We've got the close one. We've got an absolute cracker. And why are we not surprised? South Barwon, well, when they've been beaten this year, the margin has never been double figures. And the last two meetings between these two teams have been decided by four points or less. And there's plenty of feeling in this one as well. A quarter to come. St Mary's 10-7-67. They lead South Barwon 8-11-59. A break. We'll catch our breath and come back with the final term from Anthony Costa Oval. Thanks to Epco Cafe 24-7. Win free coffee for a year.
make some announcement. We might do some digging at Carrick Football too, so we can find out in regards to that injury. Players in position, Matt Kershaw. Breeze, if anything, favouring the southern end of the ground, but it has been a massive influence on this contest. Oh, well, the ball has held up occasionally. It has, but we've seen you can score uh, into the breeze anyway, so uh, you've just got to run it up a little bit more. But it's going to come down to who wins those little one-on-one -on -one contests, who wins more of them, who can get on top of their opponent in those individual contests and get the ball in their forward half. I think South Bowen, if they kick the first in the first uh, probably five minutes, they're going to be hard to stop. Our final quarter, thanks to the Bowen Health Foundation, it's giving weekend across Geelong. Here's Jason Doherty. So Fraser Fort in the ruck against Loftus, who takes tries to take it out of the ruck, but Fort does and gets it forward to an open half forward flank ball, spinning around and kick off the ground by Selwood. Goes back towards centre wing. Harry McMahon picks it up, can go with the handball to Selwood. He elects to go further to Garner, who takes the mark at half back. He just chips the ball to True centre half back, now Travellini to the outside with the kick holds up a little bit but Connors is able to take the mark in front of Carmody he chips the ball towards Damien, Damien McMahon right in front of the scoreboard on the outer side centre wing position so it's just uh, going around the line now he goes high and long towards half forward with the kick Fort gets back there, punched away by Goff falls to the front, Augurinos can kick it around the corner Towards, center, towards half four, Dobson got a couple on him. He kicks it off the ground. He gains 30 metres. Coming across, though, Peters for South Barwon. Kick back to whence it came. Towards 50. In fact, that's on the netball courts. It's out of bounds on the full. Samaris with the free kick. We'll keep an eye on some more about Gully Plan Farm matchups. Remember, Ben Callett out of the contest. Free kick taken for the Saints by Damien McMahon. Kick inside. 50 back with the fight. Judging at best. Mark taken by Hayden Smith with that awkward left foot kicking style. He goes short and... Mark taken in the left back pocket. And it's in the hands of Todd White. He's got it a long way from home. White will drive it towards the outer wing. Looking out there for Caldu. Spoiled by Burke. Front of the pack. Cashin brought down in a tackle. Ball spilled out by Travellini. But not before the umpire had said, give it to me. I will ball it up almost to the point of the square. At right half forward for St Mary's. They lead by eight as we tick towards two minutes gone on the... Uh, Port Phillip Ferry's time clock in this final turn. Loftus from the ruck contest. Shuffled the handball out. Didn't hit a target though. Stevens for Samaris leaves it behind. Middleton got the handball out towards Fort. Who tried to run onto it. Couldn't pick it up though. Now Harry McMahon. He shuffles the handball towards Garner. 55 out towards a half forward. Was that a hold? The umpire said play on. And the ball, Goff, was putting the pressure on. Samaris come back towards Dowling. He's taken the mark. 50 from goal. Northern end of the ground. So not much to kick to, though, at the moment. They're pretty stagnant in their forward 50. And I don't think Dowling is going to be able to kick it from there. He's going to be kicking from outside 50 now. Goes to the top of the square. Where's it going to land? South Bowen have got some numbers. They punch it out to the Lockie Peck pocket. It's out of bounds and we'll have a boundary throw in. He got good purchase on the kick, Dowling. Yeah, he did, actually. Uh, Goff's got that permanent job now on uh, Dobson. So they've made that change with Hutchison... Just probably not getting the uh, job done in that second quarter, or third quarter. For Wombat Gully Plan Farm, 201 Townsend Road in Woolat. Their route season now underway. Boundary throw in was a shallow throw in. Fort on the tap, but it rolled back towards the boundary line and out of bounds. I don't reckon they can afford to concede the first. They can't. They've got to get the, one, the first one in that first five minutes, I reckon, just to get this game back on a bit of an even keel. Fort winning the tap down again in the ruck contest against Loftus, who then went to the front of the pack for the Saint, and then a quick snap around the body, rolling ball through for a minor score from Kane Loftus. Two behinds for him this afternoon. And now eight for the Saints. They're 10 8 68. South Barn are 8 11 59 in this final quarter of K Rock football. This took three and a half minutes for the Barn Health Foundation. White kicked it in, got it towards Peters, who got it back to White. Goes with the left foot, kicked a half back. Fraser Fort standing over the football. Now the chain of handballs for the Swans to get it back to the middle. But sitting behind is Samaris. And they go with a kick. Jansen towards half forward. It was a good kick to Keist over the top. His kick was partly smothered. Peters coming the other way. Sprague to come in and help for Samaris. He tried to get the handball towards Harry McMahon. Kick off the ground for Childers Lee. That came towards Cashin for South Bowen. Now Peters. Oh, a wobbly kick towards half forward. It's a two on two. Connors read at the better against Carmody. He gets the handball out though. Missed the target. Coming the other way. South Bowen fighting hard for Connors. Comes back. Was that a push? The umpire said to I. Damien McMahon. And I think it's going to be a free kick. Yeah, Noble. To Noble. 
So he's going to be outside for on 50, directly in front. Lockie Noble, he's kicked one this afternoon. Damien McMahon continues to protest, but the umpire's given the free <laughs> kick. He's not going to change it now. I've never seen an umpire change his mind like that. So, Lockie Noble. It's that goal within five minutes, Jase. Yep, just on five now as he comes in. Oh, high kick. That's a real nine iron. Gone to the top of the square. Bosley, can he take it? No, he can't off hands. And through for one behind to South Barlett. So they go to 8 12 60. Trail St. Mary's 10 7 67. Barlett Health Foundation K Rock final quarter scoreboard. I reckon that scoreboard's out by yeah. a point. It might be 10, uh, 10 8 as Travellini from inside defensive 50 kicks to the wing to Dobson. Good spoil. Goff got a good piece of it towards the boundary line and out of bounds just as. Jaree was ready to pounce on the loose ball for South Barwon and get away. He just ran out of room and got a boundary throw in truce in the wing. Hope you're enjoying the call and enjoying it as much as we're bringing, enjoying bringing it to you on KROC 955, KROCfootball.live and through aflbarwon.com.au. Tap down by four, just laid it down to the front for Cunningham, but Loftus got involved. He ran into a two, make it a three-man tackle. Starkey, Madigan and Jaree, sounds like my law firm. <laughs> Starkey's got it, the free kick for holding the ball against him. Loftus, high ball, left half 40, goes looking for Ford. He couldn't mark. He's brought in again. He's brought in again. Just missing with a snap across the face through for a minor score. Margin is seven. 10 8 68 St Mary's on the final quarter. Carrock Bowen Health Foundation scoreboard. It's giving weekend. Keep an eye out for those collecting right across Geelong this weekend. 8 13 61. It's for your local health service. So, kick in Travellini for St Mary's. So the outer side plays on. Tries to drill the pass. It was he did too. Jared Garner has bought his own football today at Anthony Costa Oval. He takes the mark and just settles the play down. Kicks it along the line. And it's a great kick too. Just got a hand in though. It was Caldu against Matty Keast. And the ball's off hands and out of bounds for a throw in on centre wing on the outer side. Garner does average 32, the same as his jumper number, Jace, and uh, <laughs> he's probably on track for that today. Just waiting for the ball to come back into the field of play. Boundary umpire had to wait for a member of the public to hand it back to him. Fort, Loftus, Loftus at the front on the tap down. Handball release, Keese went looking for Copley. Copley had a fumble. Keese had to come and lay a tackle. Jaree might be at the bottom of all that on the outer wing and we'll get a ball up. 68 plays, 61 on the final quarter. Bowen Health Foundation scoreboard. Ford, who's been unbelievable this afternoon. Won the tap down. Well played, yes, Carnegie. But the tackle, wonderful tackle, although it wasn't Good. rewarded. Now the quick kick forward, Madigan. That'll bounce at left half forward. Carmody tracks it next to the boundary line. Tried to keep it alive with a handball back to Noble. They run out of room. Boundary throw and really the free kick should have been paid. Yep. Back on the wing for holding the ball for St Mary's. And it wasn't. And South Bowen were able to eke the ball forward. And we'll get a boundary throw in at left half forward. Just outside 50 in the sunshine on the outer side. So throwing Fort goes up uncontested. Loftus actually takes the the uh, tap down that he that Fort presented to him. And the ball spills free and Loftus again. His kick was smothered. Oh, third turn. Three, three times, three he three got times he's still got a smother. <laughs> Madigan tried to get a kick away to Keith. Short little kick. Oh, just 15. Get the tape measure out. And Augurinos gets it up to Garner. He gets it in board to Dowling. They're moving now the home side. The umpire gets in the way as he goes with a kick towards Bonder to hold up. He now he tries to hold off his opponent in Shepard as well. He tried to tap it on. Garner gets across there to help out on centre wing. Ball spills free. Keys to Bond. In fact, it was Burke who got it away. Now McMahon. Oh, chips the ball too far to Hillier. And it's been taken by Todd White. White comes in board. Well, way to kick Cunningham. He's been really good this afternoon. And he kicks really wide for Carmody. He'll have to wait for it to bounce. Connors played it well, knocked it away from Carmody towards Dowling. Although Connors came again and was taken high by Ford. Ford didn't get down low enough on Chipper. And then he goes wide with the kick. Finds a teammate who's got it in Jansen. A laconic bounce on the outer side. And then a kick to half forward for Sprague over his head. And the ball will roll towards Hillier. He went to lay a tackle on Peters. Numbers back there for South. Peters was okay. Handball release was good. Gave it to Jaree. Trying to get it back to Peters. Cruising past. But he missed him and it's out of bounds for a boundary throw-in. Margin at eight. 
We'll make it seven. St Mary's 10, 8, 68. Scoreboard wrong here at Anthony Costa Oval. If you're listening to us through krockfootball.live, South Bowen, 8, 13, 61. Boundary throw in. Sprague against Fort. Fort gets it down. Madigan tried to tap it on outside towards halfback Broughton over the top. And he can't take the ball anywhere. Wrapped up by Keast. Also, Harry McMahon in the tackle. So, right half forward for St Mary's. Ball. Keist again putting a good tackle on. Now Pye will come in a bit more work to do. So, it's going to be another ball up. Just a bit of a stalemate on the outer side. Now Fort gets a kick from the ruck contest towards centre wing. Peters tried to pick it up. Oh, just got the handball away. Just, it was only a throw. Back towards Cunningham for South Bowen, who broke free. Goes to the right foot kick towards a vacant half forward flank. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great pick up by Noble, who gets it back in board. Kick over the top for Carmody to run onto it. He can't pick it up, though. Connors better at the back. Gives it away by hand, and they're away against the Mary's oh, Wonderfully back. well played by Connors. And then the clearing kick is good to Harry McMahon. That has held off a goal attempt yep. from South Bowen. Harry McMahon. Sorry, Kingy, you those one-on-one -on -one contests, isn't it, that we were talking about? Big man short to Jansen, who's got it. The former Port Melbourne and North Melbourne VFL player. Right half back. A high kick to four to the wing. He sends it. Judging it best with Peters. He dropped the mark. Dobson, the handball out the back, looking for Johnston. He's under pressure from Shepard. Ball out of bounds. Boundary throw in. So Mary's have added the one behind. South Barwon have added the two behinds. And the margin is seven points at the 11-minute mark of the final term on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock. So Mary's holding sway by just over a kick as we get a boundary throw in. Fort tried to lay it down again. This time it's uh, Duray who had a fresh air. He's picked up cleanly by Modern Rayner. Puts it towards Ford 50. Hilly had it knocked away by Hutchinson. Front of the pack. Here's Stevens dribbling underground, kick a rolling ball, deflected off the bicep of Dowling and towards Hillier who went to ground, ball at the boundary line but not out in the Lockie Peck pocket. That's the right forward pocket at the northern end, a scrap of players, there's about five or six of them and we will get a ball up. Players, umpires shield their eyes from the sun as we'll get a ball up right forward pocket, St Mary's in attack, can they find a goal that might be enough to put South Barwon to bed? No goals in 12 minutes of play in this final term. Ball. Johnston put a tackle on. Shepard got it away somehow. Gray around the corner. Is that a hold? The umpire said. The umpire was standing right there. And it's going to be a hold. It's going to be St Mary's free kick. And it's going to be Harry McMahon with the free kick. 50 from goal. So lots of players between he and the actual goal. And filtered back there to Swans defenders. And Harry McMahon, who has kicked one this afternoon, kicking into a bit of a breeze. Well, that may have dropped as well. And as Kirsch said earlier, no real trouble kicking goals at this end. And he has absolutely butchered that to the right forward pocket. And off hands, out of bounce. Come on, Kingy, give us a goal, for goodness <laughs> sake. Do something, boy. 12 and three quarter minutes played on the yeah, Port Phillip Ferries time clock, and we haven't had a goal added to the Barwon Health Foundation scoreboard. Right forward pocket. Fort and Loftus doing the ruck work climbing up trying to get a hand on it was Jeray. he was able to pull it left foot kick but only as far as Harry McMahon who checks a kick looking for a marking target in Hillier but standing tall Hughes took a really good mark that's a ham on hanger contender in the context of the game he wants the corridor he wanted Cunningham ball's going to roll towards Bond who got down low Noble went lower got a tackle late Cunningham just briefed to handball forward Algarinos will track it he oh, got away from Cashin too easily and got through traffic and then pulled a kick to a one on one Garner Peters Peters got a hand on it for South Bowen did okay but then had a fumble the opportunity June time had to tackle Loftus who got a handball away. Bouncing ball, Shepard couldn't get onto it. Neither could Hillier. Goff. Oh, it's not like a cake of soap, but it's not really. Cunningham had a fumble. Oh! oh! Accidental front on contact from Copley. He's okay, Cunningham. He just collided with his knees. The head of Cunningham, he gets to his feet and kicks wide and finds a marking target. And it's Noble who quickly wants to get on with it. Noble to the corridor. Got to be precise. Oh. Mulraney got one high. Free kick is going which way? Going to Selwood oh. for a high free kick. 
for St Mary's and he quickly plays on with a kick that just sits up for Harry McMahon to mark and a handball wide to Rayner. Yes, he Rayner now from centre wing goes towards half forward looking for Garner. Duray right next to him. Garner kept it in board to Johnson. Got it back to Garner in the locky peck pocket. Right foot kick towards goal. He has oh, touched on the line. Rowan Goff. That would have been the Lambies to have a goal of the century. <laughs> and he's put it through for one behind. So... 10 9 69 St Mary's South Bowen 8 13 61 Bowen Health Foundation K Rock final quarter scoreboard. Margin is eight. White brings a broadcast side a high ball. Fort and the two on one is going to have to be good. Sprague brought it to ground. Cash and he'll get a free kick. It was taken high and a quick release advantage. Broughton got the handball from Fort. Now will kick inside Fort 50. Bosley's target. Although the ball will roll away from McMullen and Bosley. Bosley got there first and got his boot on it and kicked the goal. Good heads up play from Fort, who got the ball moving into the path of Broughton. And then Broughton's long ball set up for Bosley on the goal line. And Bosley kicks his second of the afternoon. Kicked the Swans first, and he's kicked the one that pulls him back to within a couple of points of St Mary's. Final quarter, K-Rock, Bowen Health Foundation scoreboard. It's St Mary's, 10-9-69. They lead South Barwon 9-13-67. If you're listening at the ground, the scoreboard is out by a point, and I really hope the players know that. <laughs> it's a great kick by Broughton, wasn't it? And they, Bosley gave him a metre start too, and just the pace of him to get back in front and uh, it was just a clever kick. They held on really well there, South Barwon. They defended well in their, their defensive half, and they probably deserved to, to crack it open then. So back in the middle, Fort and Sprague back in the ruck for St Mary's. Fort gets it down. Broughton can't take it. Keast tried to get away and he got the handball out wide. Harry McMahon got it further afield. Now Jansen runs from half back to centre wing. Scrubby kick. Garner off a step towards a two on two. Across the back. Mark taken. Dobson just came up the ground a bit further and brought Goff out with him. Hillier dropped back and there was a bit of space for Dobson to run into. And he has kicked four goals this afternoon and this the quick reply for Samaris. He's kicking from 35 out directly in front northern end of the ground and he has gone back on the Mitch Stark as well. Kirsch is just about to pat him on the head. I He's am. far away. Let's push him back up. Just push him back <laughs> up. He comes yeah. in. He's kicked four. This to make the margin eight again. Quick response. He comes in. Right foot kick and has kicked the goal. goal. That has... It looked like it was going to float away to the right but it just kept its uh, trajectory and that is a handful for Dobson. It just held on, didn't it? It did. So he kicks his fifth and the 11th for Samaris. They go to 11-9-75. And as we said, out to that eight-point break again. 10-7-6, sorry, 9-13-67, South Barham. And that's on the Barham Health Foundation K-Rock final quarter score. Well, I just hope that uh, hasn't knocked the sails out of South Barham because it uh, took them a while to defend and then kick that goal. And you hope they respond now at the 17-minute uh, mark. You see what they've got. Umpire tosses it into the air in the middle. Fort and Sprague. Fort won the tap down. He'll try and do his own roving. Lost it in the tackle of Stevens. Keith now lays a tackle on Madigan and dumps him to ground. Umpire says he's going nowhere. I'll ball it up. So still inside the centre circles. Here at Anthony Costa Oval. Tap down by Fort. Rolling ball towards the outer wing. Madigan did he get a push in the back from Harry McMahon. Umpire didn't see it that way. He might actually ping him for holding the ball. Here he will. Has to. And Harry McMahon's one or the other. back. Yeah. <laughs> Wins the free kick. McBarn, who's been solid this afternoon for the Saints, sends it inside forward 50. What's he got marking wise? Dobson, good spoil, Goff from behind, front of the pack, Dowling, and don't argue on Mulraney. Handball though turned over. Peters back to the voice of White. White jammed it on the boot and got it to half back, and Cashin has got it for South Bar. Plays on, gives the handball away. They want to try and move it quickly. The Swans, Duray, wrapped up. Pushed out of bounds by Burke. Throw in, said the umpire. Lucky. The theatre. Umpire Jones. Give holding the ball. But he's pushed him out of bounds and it'll be a throw in. Centre wing on the outer side. Fort pushes Sprague away. Big fist away too. Now Madigan. Left foot kick towards half forward. Kelly O'Neill can't take the mark, but his second effort was all right. Got the handball away. Middleton wrapped up, loses the football. O'Neill again out in front of Cashin. 55 out, squirts the ball inside. Oh, runs past a couple of swans. Oh, Jansen dropped the football. Oh, oh, I said he dropped the football. 
Jeez, that was wow. hot. Oh. <laughs> Jesse Travellini's looked at us and asked yeah. us our opinion. <laughs> we think he was a bit stiff, Chris Jansen, there, Jess. <laughs> well, umpire McElhinney didn't think so. No, he did not. And Jackson Carmody has the football. 40 out directly in front. I love how the players interchange <laughs> gate is right in front of us. Yes. Here at, so it's the best place to call from. It is. In the comp. Carmody hasn't kicked one yet. Can he do that? He comes in. Oh, I think he squeezed it. He yes. has to the right hand side. Well, the Don Matheson Pavilion's yeah, going they, off. They, yeah, yeah they, they've oh, gone really justice. Cheers, exactly right. Justice. All deserved. 9 one. 14 68 <laughs> South Bowen, 11 9 75 St Mary's. Bowen Health Foundation, K Rock. Final quarter scoreboard. We're ticking towards time on in this final term. The margin says six on the scoreboard, but it is seven officially. And Ling has got the kick in duties. Seth Barwin have set up, got her chance to set up with the ball going over the fence. Ling runs out of his defensive goal square. Now he kicks towards half back. Fort positioning himself, but over the top. Good strong mark taken by Charlie Sprague in the one on one, giving up height and size. He short kick, showed a little bit of it to Jeray, but Augurinos is marked next to the boundary line. Back of the wing, out of sight of Anthony Costa Oval. St Mary's by seven. Kick to the wing. Oh, the kick had too much on it for its intended target. And Keaston coming up and taking the mark was Hayden Smith with this very unique kicking style. Paddy de Grandis is unique. Hayden Smith has got a little bit of difference about it too. Kick on the bounce. Mulroney couldn't take it, but then he did eventually find it. Had his kick partially smothered. It rolls inside forward 50. Just trying to get territory here. Bursting his way through. The handball came from Burke. And too high is the free kick. Going to be paid to Copley, I suspect. And he'll take it between the 50-metre arc and the edge of the centre square. With his team leading by seven points. You can hear the directions. We still have to move, says the Samiri's bench. Oh, he goes out to looking for Damien. Uh, he's got two against him. Got one high, the umpire said, playing. Got some support. Oh, three kick all green. I'll drop the football, said the umpire. Yeah, that was. Yep, so Carmody will take it. Right half forward for South Barwin. Comes off the mark a long way, goes into the top, into the pocket, punched away from Caldu. Big thump away defensively. Samiri's supporters very happy about that in the Don Matheson Pavilion. In front of there, we will have a boundary throw in. Good crowd. Cracking game. Margin is seven. Ball back into play. South Bowen in attack. They trail. Fort try to double palm it down to the front to Harry Cunningham. And he was able to take it, but not before being wrapped up in a tackle and having his progress halted and 40 out from the South Barwon goal we will get a ball up into the air it goes again Fort winning the tap again this time rolling ball Caldo in traffic quick snap had it partially smothered around the corner rolled through the arms of Bosley and it's knocked through from behind by McMullen and the margin is a goal the margin is six points with a rush behind to South Barwon there 9-15-69 St Mary's are 11 9 75, 22 and a quarter minutes played on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock in the cracker at Anthony Costa Oval. So Travellini got the ball from Ling. He goes along with the kick, looking for Copley and Burke. Copley tried to break free. Now Augurinos off a step. High kick towards half four. Dowling, I think that's out of bounds on the full. It was pretty close to the Goodyear sign over there. And I think it's, well, gee oh, whiz, it must have yeah. just been in. So it's going to be a boundary throw in. So for St Mary's, just between centre wing and half forward. Keldu on the ruck against Sprague, giving Fort a chop out, and possibly pushing Fort forward to, for a goal. Now Garner tried to get it to Augurinos. Keldu gives it away by oh. hand. Duray had it, lost it. Garner the other way, did well. Keys drew a ball, got it to Johnston. He goes inside 50, coming out at pace. Loftus tries to tap it to himself. Thought about the handball, gets around on the right foot, goes towards goal and goes across the face of goal. Handy point, handy point. Okay, and that's Kane Loftus' their third behind this afternoon. So they go to 11 10 76. Some areas, South Bar 9 15 69. The kick in finds its way to Jeray. They just got to attack now. He goes short and. Mark taken by Broughton. Broughton to the leading fort. He marks just inside the centre square. Turns and sets it up to the pocket. Bosley on a searching lead, diving and marking. Down low takes the mark. Needs to get up quickly and get moving. 23 and 50 played on the Port Phillip Ferries time clock. Bosley gets up a little bit sore from that diving attempt. In front of a sizable crowd 
that is assembled in front of the Dom Matheson Pavilion. A shot at goal for Bosley to pull the margin back to one point. The scoreboard now correct here at Anthony Costa Oval. St Mary 76, South Bowen 69. Bosley on a tight angle. Man on the mark, about 45 from goal. Bosley sends no. it on its way and he's missed the lot. He shanked it and he's put it out on the full. And that's a missed opportunity and maybe the last chance they had South Bow. And if they would even score a point, they would have been within a kick. But now they still Harry, trail by seven. Harry, so Nick fly. Connors, footy in the back pocket. Plays on, goes as long as he can. Going up Burke from the side, off the back, Augurinos, left foot kick towards Hillier and the boundary line. The boundary line will win that one. It's out of bounds on the full, so the Swans, one last chance now. They come back in board, Hutchinson with the kick. It's good too, all punched away by Johnston. Pretty good defensive play. Now it falls towards Sprague, tries to ride the bump. He's lost the football umpire. He said he has been holding the ball. So South Bar with the free kick and there's a big pack. They can't get the footy out. And it's right underneath a couple of players. Selwood running away. Now Broughton with the free kick. Four to the centre circle. Goes inside 50. Needs a mark. Connors from behind. Handball. Chain of handballs to Trevellini. Under pressure. Drop the footy. Up I said play on. Different interpretation. Now ball comes back understand. towards <laughs> the defence. Handball. No. Umpire said high. Free kick. And it's going to be to Harry Ling in the last line of defence for St Mary's. It's not going to be a long last quarter. We've only no. had the two goals kicked. So St Mary's with possession of the footy right now. With Ling driving it towards the outer wing. He's kicked it straight to Todd White. And they've got, they've got a score go. from here, South Bar, and they have no choice. White quickly goes now, drives it long top of the square, O'Neill from behind flew, couldn't mark, Ooh. front of the pack four, went to go out of midair, Cunningham ran straight into trouble, somehow released a handball, Burke, Travellini got to hit a target, does on the way out kept his head, McMahon marks there's a siren down the trove, <laughs> Terrace is not the siren here at the ground it's a fire truck kick to half back, oh wonderful Mark Sprague under pressure, a Hamlin hanger White was ready to close him down and Sprague stood tall and took a really good mark, slow to his feet. That might have just been enough for St Mary's to hold on in an absolute thriller here at Anthony Costa Oval. 60 out from the South Bowen goal. Charlie Sprague on the boundary line has taken that mark. He goes as long as he can towards centre wing with the kick. Goff in front takes the mark, needs to move it quickly, or tried to, but nobody was there for South Bowen. He's got to go. He's got to go. And there is the siren. It's too late anyway. Samaris win. 11 10 76. They defeated South Bowen. 9 15 69. An absolute thriller at Anthony Costa Oval. And St. Mary's have picked up win number eight of season 2023. And based on what's taking place right now up at Drew Oval, the Saints will find themselves going into our last break of the season, likely on top of the GF.